Shall we play a game? Focus that'll sort itself out in a moment. Cool tune is the random voice welcoming. Oh, there we go. Camera sorted out. How are you all? How are you all? It's Sunday night, a quiet Sunday night. Alrighty, chaps. Hello, good evening. It is Sunday night. It's time for some competitive Rocket League. And we're going to have four series. Three of them are third place playoffs. One of them is a 1v1 final. All of them best of seven. I'm hoping to be joined by Hot Zen Monster, but we'll wait to see if that happens. <laughs> My brother thought you were being crazy. I was being crazy. Hello, Ghost. How are you? One hand says here. Yeah. Hey. Are you all ready and warmed up, Mr. One Hands? And Lorenzo Della Noche, welcome and hello. Ruben Davis, yo! So, Mr. Muse, like, hey, where's everybody? So few people here. You know what? Whoever's here is here. We're live, we're doing the thing. Whoever shows up is gonna show up. Okay, so. First match gets underway in nine minutes, and that is a third place playoff IGL Spring Circuit. This is a tier four division eight, which means it's around, I think around champ one-ish, diamond three champ one, if I'm not mistaken, there or thereabouts. And the two teams playing are Escan Carada FC versus PMRLR Esports Black. So they have a similar record, around five, six wins, three losses each. Uh, PMRLR has a goal scoring record of 81%, 81 goals they've scored in this league, 65 scored by Escan Carada. And okay, and the rosters are, I don't even know how to say this dude's name. He's the captain, MFPNNPFM. Mm <laughs> Is how I'm saying his name. JMSV18. Meme. And then on Esports Black, we have One Hands. Yolo John. Hey, Yolo John. I recognize the name now. He's a he's been in the chat. He was in the fashion show last last Tuesday. Fabulous. Shadow Dank Driver and Joe Flegel. That coming up pretty chop chop. We don't have subs today. So so who's your roster, One Hands? Ah, okay, fair enough. Okay, so what are you, One Hands? So the champ one-ish? Champ one, champ two? All right, cool. So One Hand Shadow and Joe Flegel will be out, out on the field for PMRLR. What's the what's the short name for your team, One Hands? PMRLR is hard to say in a hurry. Diamond Two, no worries, no worries. <clears throat> All right, well while while we're sorting stuff out, I'll get the lobby set up in the background. Just say pimp my ride. That's got oh pimp my ride. <laughs> I'm not retarded. I'm just slow. I get there eventually. Pimp my ride. I love it. So I'm gonna call it pimp my ride. Is your name in game in Rocket League? Up against. S. Ken Karada FC. Okay. All right. Lobby's up. Lobby is up. I'll send you the deets. They're the same as they were before.
So this is a three versus three best of seven final. <clears throat> when is the next one what? When you say the next one, one hands, next one what? You think your memory is bad? Now you're going to test mine. Oh, you and Shadow. It does. Okay, okay. Well, that's awesome. The next one will be not this Tuesday, the next Tuesday. So what's that? The 22nd of June. All right. Well, I guess we can now go here. I need to quickly test all my effects. So it's going to be ugly and noisy for a second, but bear with me. I just need to do all of that because then they work when I use them. So, <clears throat> All right, let's get scoreboards up. Competitive Rocket League on a Sunday night. All right, we have Joe Flegel, One Hands and Shadow in the lobby. They are ready and good to go. <clears throat> now I'm just waiting for him and his team. Bro, spam, lol, what? What are you talking about, Mr. Mew? <clears throat> All right, I think I might still get Hot Zen Monster to co-cast with me, which will be nice. We got three minutes. We got one team in waiting for the others to arrive. Hey, and then I pre ordered, I pre ordered a Cosmic Red Dual Sense 5 controller. And I'm getting, it arrives tomorrow. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I'll have me a, a backup controller in Cosmic Red. So that's pretty, uh, that's news. Not, uh, not earth-shattering news, but news nonetheless. Come on, one hand must do better. Must do better. What controller is it? Normal PS4. Well, if you were close by, I would. I, I have two of the old PS4 ones. I'd happily give you one if you were within throwing distance of it. No, man. One answer. You need to sort that out, bro. You can't be playing competitive Rocket League on a shitty controller. Shouting, okay, Hot Zen Monster is here, let's call him. <coughs> Mr. Monster! Uh, well, judging, judging by... You can hear me, right? Hello? Okay, good, I can hear you though, okay, good. Escan Carada versus PMR, which which uh, which I've just been informed is basically pimp my ride. Yes, yes, I was out. I was a bit slow with that, but I got there eventually. Uh, Mr. Mew, the match is supposed to be starting pretty much right now, but we're just waiting on. Oh, hold on, they can't hear you. Why can't they hear you? They hold on. We had this. Pro we had no, no. This is. 
Yeah. I, I, uh, pretty much, but there's new people that have arrived, so... Um, okay, so... PMRLR Black. Okay, hold on. Beef. Okay, before before you speak more, let's get you in here. I need to find a browser voice chat. There we go. You should be coming through now. Am I coming through now? Hello, hello. Can everybody hear Hot Zen Monster? Can you hear the guy that doesn't sound like he's from South Africa? Can you hear that guy? <laughs> now we can hear him. Yay! Success! Okay. Success! <laughs> Okay, Happy so Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday evening to you guys in Europe and the South Africans as well. The southern tip of Africa. Everybody in this latitude of time zone. Or is it longitude? Latitude is uh, horizontal, right? Longitude. Long that is long longitude. Yes, latitude okay, longitude. Is north and south. Longitude is east and west. See, there is yes, a downside just, to not I've finishing. I just realized either. something. Yes. That I'm on a small peninsula with a certain shall we say shape hanging off the edge of the u.s and Europe, yes. understandably in the much larger shaped similar peninsula <laughs> at exactly. the bottom half of, of that so but i'm i'm right in the middle from the tip uh, yeah but i'm right in the middle of the tip so i'm sort of an i'm sort of a knob on the knob yeah and i'm i'm sort of right at the i don't know where you would call it but uh, just at the tip as well anyways all right, fine. Well, well, you're welcome to. So I did a brief run through of the teams. I don't know what info you've got. You're welcome to do a quick run through of whatever you've got there, uh, Hot Zen. Well, we get a pair of tier four teams. That would be what Diamond One to Diamond Two, I guess. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, okay. <clears throat> and as Skankarada looks like they have a dedicated three man squad. They've got all matching logos and such. Um, the highest it looks like their shooter is Maymay, which I'm assuming we're calling him Maymay. Um, he's gotten the Golden Striker Award and the Tactician Award twice this circuit, so it seems like he may be the brains behind the outfit. We'll see. Um, and, just while uh, you while you're carrying on with that, I've sent you the lobby details. We'll start the game as soon as you join. Carry on. <clears throat> I got it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, and then on the other side, we've got more of an open uh, five-man roster, so I'm actually going to have to write down to see who is playing today uh since well, they do have that five man oh roster. no they've joined they've joined they shouldn't have done that oh my word okay fine well let's get going <clears throat> yeah i should be able to get it. all right well we have jmsv meme and mfp and npfm i don't know how i'm supposed to say that and then we have one hand shadow and joe fliegel all right, and we're in, and we're off, and, and <laughs> we MSV have a goal. Was the first <laughs> shot uh, and the first blood in this first match. Well, they're not pump my ride, not messing around. A goal out the gate, off the kickoff, Mr. Mew. It's heading into winter, so it's about 15 degrees. Okay, let's go. Kickoff number two. <clears throat> All right, and it is a Skankarada who's taking the lead here with an early goal. Oh, Once a bit of a scramble here, here in front of their net. Oh, yeah. oh my word. <laughs> okay. Hot Zen, it, just, it looked, from the moment this was, it just looked so dangerous. It just felt like a goal was coming, right? It, it did. We had quite the congestion in front of the net there. So, want to see everybody uh, stick to their roles. Get through their rotations. Keep your spacing. Keep well, together. that's Give a... Give yourselves uh, a chance. Yep. And at around sort of diamond two, diamond three, diamond one, you're still learning all of that, you know, like getting getting your roles figured out solidly and all that sort of thing. So, oh, is that an open net? No, Meme gets in front, gets the clear. So I expect we'll see a bit of scrambling around the net, scrambling in offense, scrambling in defense, but it should be fairly exciting nonetheless. Absolutely. Oh, well, another oh, touch oh, from Shadow, oh. really nice. Uh, Double tap off the backboard there to go up two to one. Yeah, Shadow coming up. Yeah, nice read, nice finish. Top of the net. Very hard to defend. Escan Karada going behind early. 
but now find themselves in front by a goal. We've had three goals in the first minute, so it may well be a goal fest. Yeah, and Tim my ride now out to that one goal lead. Shadow here with his uh, Lamborghini. It's a very popular car for a couple of weeks there when it was offered. <laughs> As and they always are. Just up the midfield, yeah. All right, so so despite the goal line, it is it's been a little bit chaotic, but but fairly even in terms of time spent in each other's half. Yeah, we're seeing what you would expect at this tier. Uh, a lot of battling in the corners, you know, um, sort of small clears, not really getting big clears out. Uh, small ball movement, you know, limited amount of time in the air. Uh, but, but overall, you know, guys still putting on a good show. All right, well, it's loose in the middle. Joe Flegel, last man coming, screaming out. He had to get... If he didn't get a touch there, there would have been trouble. But he did get the touch, and now they've got... Oh, well, there you go. There's a more of a booming clear toward the Escan Karada side. But it comes right back and then right back. Oh, whoa, everybody looking to miss that. But the final man getting the final touch, getting the clear. Escan Karada keep their lead. And Joe Flegel, after that ball, realizes he has no boost to catch up to it. Yeah, and I think we may, we may have our teams reversed. We got uh, hit my right in orange here with the. One oh really? Lead. Oh, they joined yeah, the yeah, other way there. around. They okay, must have I joined in reverse. Yeah. All right, I can change that. Um, I wonder All if right, well. I, uh, that might be my mistake. I might have done it wrong in game. Let me change it on the overlay. Oh, yeah. Well. <clears throat> I had another shot here. Shadow with that Lamborghini catching the air and bounce out of the corner from JMS. Always a dangerous play to bounce that ball out of the corner to midfield. If you're not sure you have a teammate there to receive it. And Shadow capitalizes on the mistake. Kept my ride up three to one with two minutes left here in the first game. But maybe he's gonna take control and tries to get it again out to the middle, but you know, it seems like Pimp My Rod and Fish really uh, fleshed out what they can expect. Uh, and they're waiting for those errant uh, centers uh, from Escancarada. Uh, seems to be just in position waiting for those to happen. Here's another instance uh, off the backboard. And Joe Flegel, I believe he gets his first goal here in game. Well, while I'm sorting out the overlay, it looks like <clears throat> we have all sorts of crazy action going on there. Yes. Yeah, I think maybe he's going to have to try to tighten up here a little bit. Maybe uh, try to focus on getting the ball to each other. Oh, and here we go. Shadow again. And my it looks word. like my ride is just going to run away with this first game. All these balls coming off the sidewalls to the center seems to be the, the vast majority of what Pimp My Ride's been able to deal with in terms of putting points on the board. Something is Escape Karata may want to be a little more cautious. Maybe get that more vertical movement of the ball uh, rather than off these corners. And here we go again, off the sidewalls of the middle. And uh, Pimp My Ride trying to take advantage of that one more time. I see one hand is up on the side wall here with a chance to maybe go to middle. Doesn't quite get the handle on it. Escape Karata takes the ball again. And Shadow picks it up immediately. It's uh, like these uh, Pimp My Ride fellows are just waiting for those balls to come off the side wall. Okay, Skankarada maybe tries some infield passing. Oh, it's a nice flick. Oh! And JM, JMS finishes it up and pulls within three here in the game. First game with uh, three goals. Differential. All right. Minus 13 left. <clears throat> and now with the overlays all correct, it is Pump My Ride in Orange that have the five goals. Skankarada two. Nice little bit of work there to get the second, but they got their work cut out for them. A minute to go. Three goals to find. From somewhere, Memes up, but one hand will get there first and clear. So game game one, look, it is a best of seven, so there is there is time to figure this all out. But it does look like, oh, well, maybe JMS getting. Finishing up there with a third, 52 seconds. Certainly the time left to find two more goals. Yeah, it's surprising to see Meimei, their striker, not really being the, 
the striker here, sort of playing more of the support role. Um, you think maybe he's trying to prioritize defense here now that they've had to suffer this onslaught from Vent My Ride. It'd be interesting to see if he's able to shift back up into his Ooh. striker role, which is what we would like to see uh, from the guy who's got those badges this season uh, as their top striker. All right, 30 seconds to go. It's very important that Escan Karada don't concede if they're to try and level it up and push this game to overtime, but the clock is running down. The pinch there going in favor of PMR, that will that will eat another 10 seconds off the clock, and I think the time may be done for Escan Karada to find the comeback in this game. And indeed it is. The clock has run down. It will now bounce. Pump Marai! Take game number one. Yeah, banger game for Shadow there. Uh, three on six. That's a 50% shooting percentage. That's a little bit higher than their average. Uh, but like we said, you you want to see a skin Karata be cautious about these balls off the sidewalls out into the center. Uh, that seemed to be all three of the goals that uh, Shadow scored were just errant touches off the sidewall to the center that uh, nobody was really prepared to take. All right, and we see it there. They did have, yeah, their eight shots versus the 9, 10, 11. So pump my right in, in front in all respects there. Pump my Rocket League ride. Okay, so that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, fine. I can do that one hands, but then we have to... Um, oh, I can't change it. There isn't enough, there isn't enough space. There nope. isn't going to be enough uh, one hands. So you can, I can have pimp, I can have pimp my rocket, pimp my ride, or pimp my rocker. That's about as far as I can go. And then Raz, to answer your question, um, Hot Zen Monster is also a professional coach, and I don't think he's he's got a he's got a client a little bit later, so I don't think he's going to be a. So I'm going to be solo for your game. All right, here we go, game two. It's going to be really interesting to see if Meme, I hope I'm saying that right, or Meme, however you want to say Me that, if he can Meme is start, good. To, uh, start to produce some offense here. He has been the offensive producer for his Gankarada all season. Uh, so it'll be interested to see if he can get a handle on something here and start producing for his Gankarada. All right. Well, I do know they're going to want to, they're going to want to do something early, but early they're going to have to defend. That's a little awkward. Nice clear from MFP. But it comes right back. Oh, I liked what Meme was doing there. But then it, the ball overran him and he was no longer in control of it. And it's put them into a bit of strife defensively. But now a nice clear rolling in front of net. No one there to take advantage. But they are okay. So a little bit of pressure coming here. This is this is looking better from them, Hot said. Absolutely, yeah. A little more evenly matched looking game now. Uh, from the first one. You know, we talk a lot about these seven game series. Uh, sometimes you need to just calm your nerves or uh, just get the other team filled oh. down. Just as I say that one hand with uh, picking up an errant touch off the crossbar uh, from Mei Mei. Oh, yeah, it wasn't actually with this team. Uh, nice little, little bit of a fortunate pinch against the car of the defender there. Popped it up nicely for him. Finishes it off. PM pimp my Rocket League ride. Looking good, at least for now, but plenty, plenty time here for Escan Karada to sort things out and get themselves back into this. Both of these teams falling in the semi-finals, but find themselves playing for third spot. A little bit of pride, a little bit of bragging rights. Yeah, and so far, you know, again, this has been a much more even match than game one. We're not seeing as many shots on net given the time. We're about a minute and a half into the match. Uh, you know, you wonder, you want to see where Meme is actually going to step up for his Gankarada. I really feel like if uh, they're going to have a chance here, you're going to have to see him producing some offensive uh, output uh, to keep up with the Pimp My Ride boys. Well, only one goal behind, and that's, that's a good start. They don't want to go two goals, three goals behind, and then find themselves chasing the game the whole way with... With only one goal in it and the amount of time left, they've got the time to construct 
their plays going forward. That was looking good. He needed a bit of backup and support. No one there to help pressure the PM, the Prump My Right team. Yeah, and again, you're seeing a little bit better synergy from the Pimp My Ride team, although there's a double commit there. Um, it's always tough to call these lower-ranked teams to be uh, certain whether or not people are uh, acting with intent or if it just happenstance, you know? Yeah, well, I, I, I think that you at this rank, you're getting into the phase of you're almost caught between the two. You know you, you, know you want to have better intent, but then you're you're a little bit overwhelmed by oh my god there's a ball i need to hit it as hard as possible so it's 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 a it's a new level of skill that's currently being developed and it and it can make for some interesting times yeah it can and you know now we're just sort of seeing these these off chance throws at the at the post at the backboard just trying to make something happen here and uh, just being frustrated again and again by the semi ride defense seem to have a pretty good handle on keeping the goal covered uh, and out of trouble. Oh, there oh. we go. Oh, Meme. Meme doing the thing. One way and <laughs> no, no, it's always that way. Nice pass out of the corner. Nice read. Nice finish. And we had eight goals. Eight goals in game one. And here we are. Minute 40 left. Only two. But is this the start? As can Corrado be feeling pretty good with ha having leveled it up and will instill them with a bit of confidence they can find a goal to take them in front and hopefully level this up after game two. Although this is coming down very awkwardly and I think was that oh, you hate this an, own yeah, goal. an own goal. I think it was. Tough angle. I think he was trying to pinch this against the, the crossbar if he could and just didn't quite get to it in time. And put my right goes up two to one. It's nice to see Maymay producing now. Uh, if they can get, if Sink Arata can get him to his his form of the entire rest of the season, uh, we'll have a much closer match here. Still close, just one goal, about a minute and 15 left here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's got to be a bit frustrating for Escan Carada though. They they haven't led yet in the series, and that well, that's actually not true. They scored a bit, they scored the opening goal, so they led for a short while. But ever since then, they've been kind of chasing the game, and that can be a little. A little frustrating after a while, but they need to carry on. No option other than to be pushing forward, looking looking for a way to break through the pump my ride defense. Yeah, and we're not really seeing, uh, I've noticed a couple of moments where they've got, both teams have a third man that's probably a little further up than he should be. Oh, but here. Well, there we again, go. Two goals for him. That's really what I think we're going to have to see from Xkankarada for them to be competitive here. And nice to see Meme connecting again off the pass out of the corner from MFP. They're having a good combo there. The, the assist and the goal, same combination as the first. So 30 seconds to go. We're headed toward a game two overtime unless one of these teams finds a way through. And Xkankarada, a, a little more urgency on their part to find to find that goal, win game number two and level it up as we go into game three. 15 seconds to go. MFP now looking to get it forward. It goes high, it's loose. Possibilities here, MFP around the corner in the last seven seconds. Meme looking for that killer combo once again. It doesn't find it. And I think we're gonna find ourselves in overtime if this ball bounces, which it hasn't yet. Being pushed forward by Pimp My Ride. JMS bangs it down to the ground, and we do have a game two. Overtime! Yeah, we do. It seems as though, oh, there's the combination off the backboard to MFP. Looks like we reversed it, the, uh, the duo here. Meme this time down to his teammate. Oh, and a tough break for one hand, trying to make that save out of the net. Mm. Always a tough ask. But and there we go. They they have done it they did what they needed to do and they find themselves leveled up one game apiece in this best of seven third place playoff and i quickly just want to say how's it to people in chat tim is here how's it dog how are you good to see you llama mr buttons and then of course raz i know you're here and l miller hello 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 okay good well we can move forward now that i've said hello 
All right. All right, and now we go to the for no, no, we're gonna go to Utopia, I think. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and just to recap, it seemed like the difference in that second game, as Gangarada seems to be trying to apply pressure until they can get the vast majority of their squad on the opponent on the opposing side, um, and trying to do it in a fashion where they haven't got the entire opposing squad to contend with. And then these passes high down off the backboard out of the top corner, you know, really tough for anyone sitting in net to get to a ball like that. You really literally have to be able to fly through a wall to uh, stop that type of a play. So let's see if that is the the only uh, arrow they have in their quiver. I can't imagine it would take long for Pimp My Ride to sniff that out, um, you know, and make uh, someone concentrate on prioritizing backboard defense uh, to thwart that effort here in game three. Well, let's see. We're all squared away. We're down effectively to a best of five. Pump my Rocket League ride up against Escan Karada, and away they go. Wow, a double neutral kickoff there, but eventually falls for one hands for Pump My Ride. He's going to try get in a pass. It's awkward, but MFP gets in front with a block, but the defensive work not done yet. Shadow looking for something in the Lamborghini doesn't find it. MFP now taking it away. Meme, can he get on the end of it? No, Shadow's going to bang it right back. Oh, and we're seeing that in the early stages of, of all the games so far has been the sort of kind of uh, take the ball up and get saved, cleared, taken back to the other side, ping pong and back and forth. But it'll settle down now. That's heading toward net. It's going to roll in for Joe Flegel. At about 30 k's an hour, 42 k's, JMS looking for the clear, dunked by Joe Flegel. He had JMS, really didn't get any support there as last man. Maybe a little early to come out and challenge that ball. Maybe want to sit in net and give his teammates time to back him up next time. And again, these errant balls uh, off the sidewall to the center where it doesn't seem, yeah, Oof. again, this is just uh, PMR's MO for this entire uh, match so far. Just getting mm. these centered balls on, a, on an odd angle. And Eskankarada just seemingly not prepared to handle them. And, uh, and and Joe Flegel, who hasn't had too much to say in the series so far, suddenly comes. It's not going to be enough to find a goal, at least not yet. Oh, nice work there to get the ball into the orange side. Shadow having to race back. But here comes MFP. Can he find Meme as he did twice in the last game? Not this time. All right, pressure building here from Escan Carada. Yeah, and again, it'll be interesting to see, like I said, they'll be looking for those passes from up high off the backboard and mm. not connecting. And here, uh, Pimp My Ride returning the ball all the way upfield on the counter with Shadow getting a nice touch uh, to go up 3 0 with. 318 left on the clock. Well, they're stepping it up a gear, our oh, Pimp My Ride. Looking very strong here. Escan Carada letting through un unanswered, three unanswered goals. And now having quite a bit of work to do in the last three minutes. And maybe a fourth shadow, but saved away. They're out of immediate trouble. One hands. Is that going to find it? Oh, my word. Cleared away by Mimi. That scrambly yeah, stuff it there. Seems like, yeah, scramble uh, seems like Skankarada almost in panic mode now, scrambling, very loose, uh, not very cohesive. This is an odd place to try to challenge the ball in the front post. Never really advisable to start from there on defense. Um, good clear up, but again, you know, just that back and forth play where PMR is just really ready for whatever's coming at them. They're stopping it. They're not really giving that opportunity. Uh, to get those high backboard passes that have been so successful for them uh, in game, that were so successful for them in game two. Well, we have here, uh, Pimp My Ride are still playing this game like it's a like it's a one goal game or even a tied up game. They're, they're chasing pretty hard, committing pretty hard, looking for more goals. They haven't sort of changed that gear of like, okay, we got three that shifted down and controlled the game. They're still pushing very aggressively like they want a lot more goals well we've talked about this many times about these seven game series and 
It may just be they don't want to, to adjust the the tempo, you know, they want to keep it up. They know they've, they've still got to win, uh, what is it, three more games to take this. Um, so it's a, it's a long road, and I feel like, you know, them keeping pressure on, probably a good uh, tactic. Why back off uh, when you know you've got three more games to win here against the squad that you're having really good luck scoring against? Yeah, it's a so it's a solid point that oh, oh dear, oh dear, a mistake there by the last man. Meme getting a touch on it. It wasn't a bad touch. Oh, oh, Joe Flegel, I think he just completely for wasn't quite sure where he was. Jumped in the wrong direction, and the ball pretty much rolls in behind him. Well, that's one, and in Rocket League, one goal leads to lots more very often. So let's see how. Yeah how Escan Carada use a little bit of momentum that they were fortunate to get and can they press press some sort of advantage they might have here in terms of momentum yeah we did see them make a little bit of a comeback in game one I want to say they were uh, had one goal there and came fought back in the last couple of minutes to put two more on the ball board so it'll be interesting to see if that's uh, something they can repeat here all right well the physical in plays game. is MFP getting oh okay this is very scrambly okay the clear but shadows there surely that's in oh no it hits the post and rolls the entire length of the goal line and then away Escan Karada survived but now they've got 30 seconds they've got to find two more goals yeah, just to push this to overtime but it is Joe Flegel who has possession and he looks like he just wants to run down some time 20 seconds to go. Escan Carada pushing hard to find a way. Is this one of them? Yes, it is! Nice little combo play there. Meme gets the goal again. The combination between MFP and Meme. Nice little touch there just to take it away from the defender. The demo on the goal line, just to be sure. A sweaty 14 seconds coming up. It'll be interesting to see what they can do. Certainly seems like a Skankarada knows how to turn on the Jets when they're behind. Uh, let's see if they can do it again here, or if it's just a oh. little too late with four seconds left. That's a tough clear, and I believe it'll be really tough for them to make anything yeah. happen here. That's, that's going to put a cap on game three. Well, we saw this in game one, Hot Z Monster, where... Yep where SK and Karada were making the comeback, but you feel like they left it probably 15 to 30 seconds too late. Like if they had another 50, if they had another 30 seconds, they might have found that equalizing goal. So the comeback, they got to start it a lot earlier in the game and, and hopefully early so they take a lead rather than having to chase from behind. Yeah, and on the scoreboard, a very balanced squad in Skankarada. All pretty close, you know, within 150 in terms of uh, points. Uh, two for two from Meme, which was exactly what we wanted to see. And then, uh, of course, MFP and Meme with that connection, uh, putting those two goals up uh, with two assists from one to the other. And I believe we had to reverse the same way or maybe in the previous game. But what you really want to see is Skankarada come out of the gate here with that same energy. Uh, as they've been sort of coming up with in the last minute to minute and a half of uh, this past game and, and the first match as well. If they can come out of the gate here, maybe get up ahead of time and not have to make up uh, that deficit, they'll have a better shot. Kind of similar to what they did in game two. All right, Escan Carada looking to level it up and make it an effective best of three going into the last three games. Pimp my Rocket League ride. They take a win here. They will have three chances to take the series and be the third place champions for the IGL Spring Circuit. A little bit more spacing here from Escankarada. It seems like a different looking team. We just want them to be cautious of those errant balls to the center again. That seems to have been the magic or pimp my ride throughout the series. Anytime a ball's coming off the side wall. And here, JMS. Oh, oh just and, missing off the post. And there, a beautiful opportunity to take that early lead, the one they need so badly. But it hits the post, goes wide, and they're going to need to rebuild. Interesting choice of shot there from JMS. It's going to get them in trouble. One hand's up, but he completely under and overshoots that attempted shot there. Oh, Meme. 
defensively could have done so much better and it allow shadow to get in and take the early goal relatively early goal for pm l r pm r l r pump my rocket yeah. league ride and congrats to uh, joe flegel there on a really impactful a uh, bump of the net uh on the goalie there uh to open up that uh, shot for shadow Joe Flegel, that shot's awkward. MFP does get up for it. Oh, great shot by JMX. It's going to be wide. Can someone get the follow? The demo in net. No, the open net is missed. MFP trying to make up for it. It's floating awkwardly. And well, go in. What a strange passage of play. It was so well done. The goalie removed. The open net missed. But finally, MFP finds a way into the pump my right net. Yeah, and you know, I think that PMR has had the better of the 50 game throughout these first few matches, and it's nice to see his Gankarada finally come out on top of one of those 50s uh, and, get the, and get the net on it. All right, they need to lock down their defense because they have had a habit of conceding relatively quickly after leveling things up. They've got to lock it down at the back, push it up forward, and find a way through opportunity now shadow will get there have they overextended themselves they did a little but mfp gets back and clears via his own backboard oh my yeah, word this is shadow trouble continuing to apply pressure here yeah they every time the ball makes it close to their net and it, 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 it feels a little bit nervy hot zen but they've got it out for now they're back in attack jms looking to put it in front of the goal, Joe Flegel with a pretty easy clear gets it back into the Escan Carada side. Yeah, we're seeing a little more back and forth now. I feel like PMR does seem to have that gear. They like to go a little more conservatively. Oh, oh wow. And again, just an errant bounce up into the top left corner. And there we go, Meme with the block. Bounces nicely for MFP, who does well to get a nice, a nice enough touch on it to get it in. And they're a good combo when they get going. And now finally, Escan Carada have a lead. They're gonna wanna lock this down. Not allow PMR to get back into it. Can they extend by two? Shadow doing very well to get a touch away from the goal line and denying a third goal for Escan Carada. Yeah, well, we're still just waiting to see that JMS or, or uh, MFT connection. Um, with Maymay, it seems like it's, it's a very hit or miss whether or not that opportunity is presenting himself. Here's an errant ball off the sidewall, the center, but Maymay unable to capitalize on it. With Central in the mid midfield, and so it continues. But here come PMR in attack. Okay, intercept by Meme. Oh, nice, nice intercept. He's done that a few times where he gets in front of the ball and puts it into a strong attacking position. But yeah, more defensive you know, work to I'm, be done yet. Yeah, I'm just noticing that JMS seems to be holding that goal line even on these offensive pushes. And they're going to have a very difficult time maintaining any kind of a pressure against this PMR squad with him sitting in net like that. Uh, not, not the most advisable course of action for him. All right, they're clinging on to their one goal lead. A minute 15 left to go. They would dearly love to get a second and hopefully put a lock on the game. But it's not there yet. It's sweaty for as long as it's one goal. PMR wanting to take that lead. They don't want to level it up. They don't want to have to work too hard for this win. But they might have to if Escan Carada can hold on for another 55 seconds. Oh, MFP taking his time there, but it is going to be cleared by JMS. Here he goes, looking for Meme! It works out! Lovely play! Meme will finish it off! And they have their two-goal lead! You know, that the best-case scenario for a guy sitting in net, which, you know, we mentioned that maybe they were changing gears, playing a little more conservative, is exactly what you just saw. The guy can come out of net, clear a ball upfield, make a connection to a teammate, and put another point on the board. 3-1 to one at Skankarada here in Game 4. All right, they'll be feeling pretty damn good about that. Two goals ahead, 35 seconds to go. Quite possibly they've got this game four and will level it up. And the way things are going, 
a game seven on champions field may well be likely absolutely seems that way seems like both teams sort of mixing it up a little bit here and there you know that tactic of having jms sit in net uh once they've got that lead it, it pays off here you just hope we don't see that have to be the case again moving forward for them to be able to be effective on offense all right, they nice almost bubble. got the fourth. It's not going to be needed in the end. They might still get it. The double touch from Mimi will get the zero second fourth goal. Well, just like I said, you wanted to see Mimi step up. He is their striker. Uh, you know, averaging about twice as many points per game as his teammates and the same with goals. So good to see him step up. Um, you know, I really like to see JMS get a little more involved here as well. As they go forward, it seems like that third man position uh, is is a make or break thing for them. Either that guy is uh, where he needs to be every time, uh, or he isn't, and they're giving up goals. All right. Well, we have a game five. We're gonna see six at a minimum here, Hot Zen Monster. So yep. they're giving as good as they're getting. Both these teams. It's as tight as it can get. Two games apiece as we head into game five. And then Ellis Gamer in chat, I, I, I love the question. He comes into the chat and he says, what is this stream? Is this on Twitch? But, he, but you're on YouTube, bro. This is, this is on YouTube. But nonetheless, <laughs> welcome to the chat. Good to have you. Danix. Yeah, and to answer your question, this is a, uh, a playoff match to determine third place in the IGL European 3v3 circuit tier 4 which is diamond 1 to diamond 2 and nice. away we go it is howling time here on Neo Tokyo Hot Z Monsters aerial favored map hey, yeah we do tend to see more aerial plays on this map not really sure if there's any scientific backing for that theory but uh just a little anecdotal observation on my part. As a skanker out against the ball to center here, nobody ready to put it home though. And again, not seeing Ooh. the connections. Here's another whiff. And not seeing the connections between this skanker out of squad that you really feel like they're gonna have to make happen. Like they did in the previous game. Uh, oh, look what at a this. great play from May May. Yeah, you know what? He, he seems to be Hot Zen Monster, the team's designated vulture. He kind of just, oh, that was so well done. The half flip into the, into the tap. And he's, he, he, he's the vulture just looking for anything loose and, and not being taken care of. The dunks, the, the, the blocks. He's found ways to create opportunities for his team. You know, and as often is the case when you have one player who's maybe a little more mechanically skilled than his teammates, um, he started to sort of flush out uh, pimp my ride strategies here. Mm. Oh, and just as I say that, Shadow in that Lamborghini finds the back of the net to tie up this game five. Uh, yeah, but look one. at the work from one hand, Sierra. He controlled it and saw the two players coming out for Escan Karad, and he just banged it ag against the back wall and set up a beautiful shot for Shadow, who just had to tap it in. Nice work. A very quick response from PMR. And this is such an important game. So both teams are going to be fighting incredibly hard for whatever advantage they can get here. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, as Gankarada really, I think they're going to have to put Meme in a position to strike like this here as often as they can. Uh, if they really want to have a chance, we're not seeing a lot of offensive production from uh, JMS or uh, the MFP here. Um, and you know, I say that maybe maybe I'll help them out here. Oh! <laughs> and there you go. Yeah. Put putting the jinx on, and there we go. The combo of MFP and Meme working out beautifully. There, MFP getting it past two players to set up the shot for Meme. And they go ahead again in game five. Now you really start to get the sense that uh, the momentum is, is shifting in Stankarada's favor. But this uh, sent my ride squad very tenacious. We've seen them fight, fight back in uh, previous matches. So we'll just have to wait and see who is going to be the team. Yeah. That's 
gets everything to lock in. Though they both seem very determined to take it here. They, you know, often, often with a third place playoff, you may get the idea that neither, you know, it's kind of third place, who cares? But both these teams playing with a lot of determination, a lot of pride. Neither want to give it away, and that came so close. Joe Fliegel squeezing it against the post that goes away, and they still remain behind. But half, we've just crossed over halfway in this game five. Eskan Karada with the advantage. Is that going to be two goals? JMS can't read the rebound, but MFP will come and clean it up and get that two goal advantage for Eskan Karada and definitely Hotzen. There has been a momentum shift. Even though Eskan Karada have kept up, you have felt that for the most part, the, the, the momentum was with PMR. But there has definitely been a shift now in this game five. <laughs> oh. Of course. Of course! Oh, One yeah, hand! Was mentioning it, come back. You know, the big difference I'm seeing is May May making a, a big difference at midfield. Uh, mm. he, he, remember that half flip play where he scored? He just seems to be a lot more engaging with the ball in the midfield, trying to create opportunities for his teammates who then are able to get the ball back to him. Um, and here he's on a defensive, in a defensive position, kind of wearing both hats, waiting for this to open up. We got a 2v1 situation here. Let's see what uh, MFP can do to get the ball over there. And it's cleared away easily by Shadow. Meme has gotten better as the games have gone on. Uh, you know, he's he's featured in all the games, but he, but he looks, uh, in games four and now in game five, he's looked far more solid or maybe just far more confident in the role he's now looking to play in the game as you've brought up in that midfield midfield position kind of trying to looking to control the play going both sides of the field yeah and it's nice to see now uh, skankarada trying some different tactics here not relying so heavily on being able to get the ball up on the opponent's backboard a little more infield passing trying to use more tight angles to the center uh here with maymay trying to get the ball out to center again out of his own half and still being locked mm. down by Pet My Ride here. Kind of an but, even situation we find ourselves in right now. Yeah, defensive mistake there. Oh my word, here we go. Suddenly we're leveled up. 55 seconds to go. Meme now looking to get the clear. Doesn't know his first touch a little heavy. It gets away from him. Intercepted by one hand. Shadow finishes it off. Three apiece. Yeah, if, if I could, you know, one constructive note uh, to Escankarada, seen so many instances of goalies, uh, whoever's in the net, just sort of flat-footed in net, uh, as we saw JMS there, which you never really want. You want to always have some sort of momentum uh, to be able to get to a ball. You, know, you want to be at the back post, but you really don't ever want to be sitting. Again, here, he's sitting flat-footed, not really rotating around with momentum to give himself that opportunity to make those good clears and they're being punished for it repeatedly well are we going to see our second overtime i oh maybe not mfp on the goal line getting an important save but the attack is not over it's still not over one hands not sure if he ran out of booze or just mistimed his aerial the last bite of the apple here from pmr and it looks like escan Carada will get the clear and yes, indeed, we go on the Tokyo to overtime. overtime. Yeah, I gotta give a lot of credit to Shadow here. He really has been a standout uh, for Bent My Ride, both offensively and defensively. I would say uh, the counterparts of Mei Mei and that both of them seem to be doing a lot of duties both offensively and defensively you know very often those are the two we're seeing on each squad that are making it back uh whenever a counter attack is launched um and also the ones applying pressure offensively uh when they do manage to gain possession of the ball Here's shadow, shadow again into the corner bring, yeah bring it around into the middle great touch there by jms to get it over picked up by meme the net's open can he get the pass in he pushes it down but one hands will get the touch and get the clear and now they transition into an attack of their own mfp on the wall looking for the clear he gets it and now 
dispossessed by Shadow again, looking for the pass. This is very dangerous. JMS and now Meme. Eye on the wall, JMS looking to pass it off the back wall. Drops down in front of the net, cleared away by Shadow. A frenetic passage of play. Stretching both sides of the field and a mistake here is going to give Shadow the winning goal for PMR. Yeah, and like, we, like I was just saying, the longer this match goes on, it becomes pretty clear Shadow and Mei, Mei uh are the two hot uh, tickets for this match. And again, both of them seemingly always involved in these uh, game-turning goals. All right. Well, that is... Well, we will have a minimum of one more game. Possibly two. If Eskan Karada can, for the third time, find a way to overcome this Pimp My Rocket League ride team in game six, which we're going to have on Wasteland. Yeah, you know, I feel like Shadow and Mamie both doing a great job to, to lead the team. You really couldn't ask anything more of Mamie, two for two, with two saves in that uh, fifth game. Uh, really doing everything he can possibly do. Now it's going to really be up to his teammates uh, to step up, maybe get a couple of points of their own on the board and uh, take a little bit of that weight off of his shoulders as he has been on the top of the leaderboard for them every one of these five games. Yeah, great observation there, Hot Zen. Well, here we go. We come to the first real, real sweaty game knockout. Eskan Karada's entire campaign could come to an end right here, right now. So they're going to be fighting hard. And even if they do overcome PMR, they've then got to do in Game 7 what they've not been able to do, which is win a game ahead of PMR. So they're going to have to win two in a row, which neither team, to be fair, has done so far. Exactly right. Yeah, it's gone back and forth. Uh... One match for each as we've run along. It's just unfortunate that for Skankarada, they end up on the uh, odd side of that equation. Uh, and that does not bode well for them in a game seven, uh, even if they can take this here. But, well, as we get down to these uh, match deciding games, you know, everybody tends to turn it up a little bit, um, trying to put their best foot forward and really be conscientious about their play. So it'll be interesting to see which team can turn on the Jets here as we come to the final matches and uh, close this out for their third place on the s spring circuit. An open looking net there for Eskan Karada, but not able to take advantage of PMR. So it's back into the mid midfield scuffle. Both teams looking to grab some sort of possession and take it over. Here comes Joe Flegel with a shot. In, in the way is Memo. Of course he is. Shadow. It's high and awkward. Can oh, it's on target, but cleared away off the goal line. A sweaty moment for Eskan Karada. It's not over for them. Here comes Joe Flegel looking to bring it back. Doesn't control it as well as he wanted to. JMS can then intervene. An open net here. Is anyone there? Meme is rolling slowly, awkwardly. MFP will get the last second steal. Any which way they can, Eskan Karada have taken the first goal, the lead for their team over PMR. Well, and again, very reminiscent of games two and four, uh, where they did manage to get the lead uh, off of a mistake from Shadow. But Shadow really seems to be uh, the make or break teammate here for PMR, as Meme seems to be for Eskan Karada. So. We don't really want to see some of these other players stepping up uh, and making some meaningful touches with some good intention. All right, one hand can't control that out of his half, so it's going to come back by JMS, who passes it around the corner. Many trying to get on the end of it. Can't get a shot off a player in the way. But now JMS is going to bang it back into the orange corner. Oh, Meme, I think with a backflip there, brings that to an end. So... Well, there we go. The long clear and the long return is what we've seen in the last 15 to 20 seconds. But the pressure is coming from Eskan Karada right now. At Meme now, he's going to look to control this. No, he's not. He's going to try and pass to JMS, but it comes to nothing. One hand says 1v1. Can he get past? No, MFP just drive challenges that and gets the better of the 50. 
Yeah, and it's a very back and forth match now. Uh, you wonder if Escankarada hasn't sort of reverted to that same uh, meta that they were using. Oh, here we got an open net, but uh, Shadow unable to capitalize. If uh, you've seen JMS sort of hanging back in net again, it's the same tactic they used uh, back in game four uh, on Forbidden Temple, where, you know, he's just sort of covering the net and allowing uh, MFP and Meme to try to work the, the ball up field. Mm -hmm. um, again, not something I would advise. No. But, uh, you, can't, you can't fault him if it, if it, if it works for him. <laughs> Well, there we go. And, and, and any strategy is a good one if it works. <laughs> exactly. So I, would, I wouldn't recommend it, but it did seem to uh, keep them in this match uh, in game four. Where they Remember, they just held that lead uh, for about the last minute and a half with the same strategy of just having a dedicated guy in net, letting May May and MFP try to bang it out of field. Here's JMS. They get to clear yeah. the issue as he's just there by himself. And Shadow uh, unable uh, to capitalize on that errant touch. It, it, uh, yeah, listen, it's, uh, there you go. Hot Zen Monster, it is a strategy, but I don't think it's a high percentage strategy, as you've pointed out. And there we see its weakness. Joe Flegel doing exceptionally well to get that ball to drop right down on the goal line, giving Shadow the best possible opportunity to send it home and we are leveled up as you would expect in the all-important game number six Escan Carada hanging on for life PMR looking to take the win right now in the next minute or so yeah and it's starting to see a little more activity on the Oof. offensive side from PMR well and Escan Carada resorting now to some more physical game oh play. my oh, word what <laughs> The shot, and I'm not sure that Escan Carada knew too much about that, but one way or another, a car got in front, got the clear, and they remain alive. 25 seconds to go. Both teams looking to win this game. MFP making things a little bit awkward. Meme, can Joe Flegel get up? He goes, he's not going to get there. JMS will get an awkward touch on it. Oh, one hands with the whiff. Opportunity now. Last chance of the game, probably, for Escan Carada to take it in regulation. But suddenly they've got defensive work to do. And I do think we are going to see our third oh, overtime. overtime. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, Mene not really getting as much time with the ball in this game as he had in the previous matches. And you start to wonder if that's not really... A make or break for the esteem for this skanker out of team they really got to try to put maybe here we go in a position where he's got some kind of an opportunity to put a touch toward net to give them a chance to take this and move on to a game seven well the interesting part of casting these best of sevens hot set oh is that oh i thought that was heading to an open net is the time factor the next match is due to start in seven minutes we are certainly going to be late for that Oh, it does seem so. Especially if Escan Karada can... Is... Sorry, if Escan Karada can find a way through and we go to a game seven. Oh, we have a rule one situation over in the corner. Who's that going to work out for? Not sure who's going to be better at a 2v2 situation here, Hudson. Oh, uh, well, you hate to see it because it's May May. And, you know, without him oh. uh, helping this squad out, you don't get a good feeling... Uh, for what this is going to mean for Escankarada. We haven't seen a lot of offensive pro production out of uh, JMS. Uh, oh, but look yet. at this, oh, the passing pass claim. They nearly, nearly worked out us, beautifully, yeah. All right, well, we're a minute and a half into overtime. The rule one situation continues over in the Escankarada corner. MFP dropping it down. Where's JMS? He's not wanting to overcommit. Smart of him to do to be a little cautious of overdoing it, but he does come now. Can he get another touch on this? Back to MFP. MFP commits himself, but he's slow. The net's open. Oh, it's still open. One hand just has to touch it. He does. He shoots. He scores. And pimp my Rocket League ride are the third place champions in the Spring Circuit. Three versus three, tier four, division eight. Well, an unfortunate circumstance to have your star striker get caught in a rule one uh, for the good 45 seconds of overtime until what was almost a foregone conclusion 
uh, that Pimp My Ride would be able to do something. I, I want to say it was Shadow again. Either Shadow or One Hands, I guess. Uh, and even with the shooting percentage being as low as it was, I mean, one on six for Shadow, one on three for One Hands, but still enough, you can see where May May not being able to connect on those two shots may have been a huge difference. And that. Which does gives it to bring. Pimp My Ride. It does bring up an interesting point. I, I, I have to be honest, I'm not a fan of the rule one thing in competitive Rocket League. I know they do it at RLCS. We've seen it happen. But sure, I, you know, how do you, especially in a case like that where your best teammate, the best member of the team is caught up with Joe Flegel, who, you know, who played his part, but he certainly wasn't the most threatening part of Pimp My Ride. Surely in an incident like that, you go, you know what? The tradition's cool and everything. I, I'm not a fan of it. I don't know what your thoughts are on it, Hudson. Uh, you know, there's so many things about this game that are that way. You know, the handshake emoji, uh, this rule one, uh, the sheeshes, all this stuff. And then, you know, the, the other's not being quite as ingrained as this, but I have always adhered to it. Um, I think that where maybe we need to have a little more levity is the ability for a teammate uh, from one team or the other to break a rule one mm. rather than having one of the people involved in it break it. Um, yeah. I think that, that that should be something that we should be able to accept. You know, if, it, if I can demo the guy you're in a rule one with and get you out of the rule one, that should be perfectly acceptable. And that's where I guess there's a bit of a gray area. Um, but, you know, you, you do want to see uh, those traditions adhere to, you know, every day for five years to get up to play this game for hours and hours and we do have those very few things very specific to us that uh you know you like to see people man maintain those type of traditions yeah i, I think i <coughs> i do think we're going to come to a time we'll see it fall away at the highest level of competitive rocket league you know one day when there's half a million dollars on the line and you're sitting in a rule one ah I don't know. Tradition and everything. We'll see how that pans out. All right, Hot Set. We're going to bring this one to an end there. Congratulations to Pimp My Rocket League ride. You are the winners over Escan Carada. Coming up next is a 1v1 third place playoff. So I'm going to take a two minute break while I get that all set up. And then we'll be back to bring you that. And I'll give you all the info on the teams. So for now. I'll see you in a moment.
Okay. All right. So next up is a 1v1 third place playoff. And that is between... Get the tan! Who I've cast twice in 1v1s. And he's coming up again. That's coming up in a second. Get the tan versus get the tan. Yeah, that works well. That is not correct. He is up against Grand. You can't hear me? Okay, I need to get you back on the stream. All right, there we go. Um, okay. Well, we've got the same. We've, this is a one v one against the same one guy against himself. It looks like Corey. Yeah, no, no. I've, ch I've I've changed that now. It's Grand up against Get to Ten, and this is a tier four one v one. So we have Grand up against Get to Ten. Okay, let's let them know. Yeah, same lobby info. Wow, so Grand. Grand coming in this uh, with an average of five goals a game. He's only conceded two matches, uh, but wow, averaging about 936 a game. I know we do see higher uh, scores in 1v1 uh, games, but still pretty impressive at this tier. Uh, that many goals for. Uh, let's take a look at that. Get to Than. Same record, 62. Um, again, uh, ooh, averaging just shy of five goals, and averaging about a thousand points. So, yeah, well, and I I cast the semi final between Get to Ten and Shameless, and we're I'm casting the final of the we're after this. Um, and it was very tight. It was a game seven thriller. It went all the way. It was it was quite awesome to watch. All right, well, we have Tatan. He is in the lobby. Hot Zen Monster's in the lobby. So worst case scenario, we'll get Hot Zen up against Tatan if we need to. And, 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 and we'll figure out the prize. <laughs> <laughs> Just all for bragging rights at this point, right? Indeed. Okay, Grand Execution is not online, so I hope, I hope he gets the message. was a banger bro and it was it was it was very very close hey listen have you been in touch with grand i don't see, okay i see you're answering me in discord i'll wait for that well he's got 10 minutes four of those have passed or that's 15 total correct is it? I, I thought it was 10 minutes. Is it 15 minutes? I think it's, it's 15, yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Well, that's... It's, it's all pretty tight with these best of seven. Even though on the previous match, we'll see there was uh, a chance of a game seven. It just uh, stepped away. It's gone. 
gone for another pizza. Yes, or he's by the pool. It's all good. <laughs> well, you you went straight to the best case scenario. Well, that's my best case. <laughs> we are We're not doing this on this Sunday. I'm at the pool. The week. Oh, of course. It's uh, it's daytime where you are. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon. Well, it's a, it's a chilly night time here in Johannesburg, South Africa. Yeah, it's funny, you know, the, uh, the, the Hootie Hoo squad we signed up Frowsy, who was in Uruguay, now in South America, and he was very uh, keen to point out to me we are the, unique. the summer circuit, which is just exclusively for us here in the North yes. Hemisphere, not for you guys down in the Southern Hemisphere, where it's now almost Christmas time in yeah, exactly. And, and, and it's been a small bone of contention. There is definitely a Northern Hemisphere privilege situation where people in the Northern Hemisphere just assume that whatever's going on for them is going on everywhere in the world. And Rocket League does it. You know, they had, you know, the endless summer two years ago and, the, you know, the summer this and the winter that. And, you, and, and it's always the op. Like Frosty, what's it? Frosty. What's the event yeah, that Rocket Fresh, League had? Yeah, Frosty Fest, which is ridiculous. It's in the height of summer here, and there we are playing in the snow. <laughs> uh, but, you know, us peasants here in the Southern Hemisphere, take take the crumbs we can get. Well, we are very, very happy to have you and to have Frosty and all of our Southern Hemisphere brethren uh, be a part of all of this. Uh, I don't know if you follow him, but he is really a, a quite a hilarious youtuber uh i must you, if you wanted to look him up i would recommend does he does he stream get does he uh no i haven't seen him stream yet he just focuses on youtube and he puts a video out every week um, oh, okay and some of them are just really very entertaining he's got that uh, you know south american accent but he's speaking english um and we've talked you know several times about it there's a little bit of a language barrier but his English is more than good enough, and uh, if you check out his Get Pranked video, uh, it's really, <laughs> the end is a banger. I would tell you it's an NSFW, uh, so don't be uh, putting it up on your computer if you're at work just now, or if you had kids around. <laughs> but okay. uh, great sense of humor, really good sense of humor. He actually did a, another series where he was doing a Rocket League Academy, but if it was honest. <laughs> oh, wow, really? Yeah, okay. uh, that, that I'd yeah, like to check out. Very comedic, like a lot of really good comedic oh, stuff. It's a lot of fun when you want to take a break from tutorial videos or uh, road to such and such or uh, 85 uh, bronze playing such and such. Uh, it's nice to have a break from all those uh, sort of formulaic uh, videos. And, uh, he really does have a, a knack for comedic timing and writing very And all around, it's really great. Okay, cool. Well, we have heard from the other from the other uh, player, right? from Grand Execution. Hey, player, thank you very much. He got stuck on the road, running late, but he's logging in right now, so we should see him in the next two minutes. Uh, and and it's going to be really fun if this if this goes to seven games, then we're really going to be behind. Oh boy, yeah. So hot well, then. Yeah, looking so, at so, it on so, paper, these guys are very. Well then, then a game game seven is quite possible. Hey, hey thanks for the sub, Antoine. It's taken you this long to subscribe, but I appreciate it. Um, so tell us about your coaching, Hot Zen. So you're now a professional Rocket League coach. So if, yeah, if some, you know, if some, well, just uh, if, so if someone is interested in coaching, they can get hold of you, right? Just uh, go to HotsonMonster.com. Yeah, I, uh, I actually had a friend who is a top 100 one one player. Uh, and actually, you know what? We've got Grand here. We can hold off on that until this match has come to its... Okay, end. Grand is here. We can get it. going. Alrighty, so he's here. They can start. Best of seven, 1v1. Let's go, Commandos. It's howling time. Game number one. Now, now, 1v1s are really interesting to cast, and I think, 
I think this is the first time I've co-cast a 1v1, which should be kind of interesting there, uh, Hot Zen. Yeah, and, you know, it's a very, very different game mode. There's a lot of things you do in 1v1s that you really don't ever want to do in the other game modes. It's a lot about keeping the ball close to your car, maintaining control, you know, maintaining boost, uh, and really a lot of it more of a mental game uh, than, you know, you see in 2v2 and 3v3. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting. I right, well, here we go. Tatan's going to get the start. The first goal. First blood grand there. And that's the problem with 1v1, of course, is if if you're going to try stuff off the wall, it better work. Because if it doesn't, and there's always a chance, a good chance it doesn't, you are going to get punished. Yeah, I've actually worked with a uh, very uh, prolific 1v1 guy, King Granny. Uh, I'm sure most oh, of you wow. have heard of. That's something he will tell you unequivocally. No need to be on the walls at a 1v1. It's really unnecessary. You lose a lot of time, uh, and you don't really maintain the control you want. So it'll be interesting to see if these guys settle down. You know, it's uh, also indicative of people who play the other game modes and just maybe uh, that carries over for them. And uh, oh, wow, yeah. Grant, way over committing to the ball. Easy sport for that time. Yeah, there's some solid, uh, you know, I I want to be good at 1v1s. I, I would actually love to be a 1v1 main. I just have to figure out the mental side of it because like with most people, it drives me absolutely nuts. Just because it takes a sense of discipline that the other modes just don't have. Or rather a very different kind of discipline that's required in this game that I think does take time to perfect. And and I have I I really admire people like like the Tan and Grandio who will say, you know what, I'm going to enter a a one v one tournament for an entire season of this abuse because it is. Uh, but if you get good at ones, I think it stands you in great stead to get better in the other playlists. There are certain aspects of one v one that carry over into other modes. Here again, Grand is giving the Tan way too much time. Uh, and, he, you know, the main difference being how close you want to stay to the ball. Um, it's really important that if you have a ball coming towards your net down the side wall that you want to be in front of that ball. Very much, uh, oh, he needs to warm up. Very much <laughs> unlike uh, 2v2 and 3v3 where you don't want to come back with the ball towards your net uh, and become a nuisance to whoever is sitting in the goal trying to defend. Um, one of the things I've run into, even with higher level players, oh boy, Tatan just kind of running away with this one. Yeah, uh, I think, look, uh, uh, Grand, has, Grand has made the point that he needed to warm up. He, he was out, which is why he was late. So this is literally his first game. And fair enough, but you know what it is? <coughs> You've got to come into these things ready as you are. Um, but I, 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 uh, Tatan, this is, I think, the third series i've cast with him and 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 i like how he goes about his business he's he's fairly solid he's not he doesn't go for he's never going for a flip reset or an amazing air dribble he's just trying to be as solid on the ground as much as possible and it has worked for him by and large yeah positioning in 1v1 in here uh defensive mistake on Tatan's part uh allowing grand to use this corner to get the ball around him just just missing the touch there. Maybe we are starting to see Grand get warmed up here. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very different game mode. It's not, it's, it's more than just that if you make a mistake, it gets punished immediately on the call. Um, it's also the way you move around the field. You know, you notice the fan here staying on the ground. You know, you want to keep your wheels down on the ground where you have the best chance to change your direction and to uh, change where you're moving along in the field. Again, he always keeping himself uh, grounded. Taking uh, small turns here, keeping the ball on the ground, trying to keep himself uh, between the ball and the opponent's goal, both to the low 50. Uh, he doesn't get punished. He was grand getting punished here for these big moves uh, where he's diving in at the ball and then just not having the time to recover quickly enough uh, to be able to mount the defensive stand once the stand to control the ball. Yeah, I think his big mistake there was once once he lost out on that play, he went all the way to the side of the field looking for the big boots, <coughs> opening up the field completely for Tatan to just give it a touch from midfield and sink the open net.
Yeah, it's a tan running away with it. You know, we talk a lot about in coaching about using the small pads rather than always, like you just mentioned, running to the to the edge of the field for that hundred. And one v ones is all the more critical. Mm. You just pick up two or three pads with thirty six boost, and you're you're in enough uh, boost to to be able to make it to the ceiling if need be. Um, and that tends to be a big determining factor uh, in one v ones is whether or not somebody's comfortable with low boost as we see Titan here, you know, moving back center field, picking up those small pads. He's got just enough boost to turn around on this and make a play. He's gonna keep it low and close to himself. You know, easy oh. peasy. He misses the ball off the net, but again, Grand with these big diving uh, attempts at the ball, just putting himself out of play. And here he gets lucky, uh, but he's gonna have to make it all the way around the corner and Titan's already set up and ready oh, to uh, Oh, and he thinks Grand's gonna go for, <laughs> for a clip. Yeah, it does. It does seem like to me that uh, Grand Grand seems like a player who 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 plays twos or threes and likes to dabble in ones. Uh, whereas to ten, I don't, I, you know, I don't know too much about him, but I get the feeling he's he's a bit of a ones grinder. And 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 you've already pointed out the key difference in their play in terms of to ten just looking to keep grounded, looking to keep the ball close, keep control as much as possible. Um, and Grand going for the for the elaborate high mechanic moves. Oh, what a beautiful backflip to get the, the ball back over. Give me just be patient here. Oh, good, good opportunity for Grand there to get the ball out. Just got to try to get the handle on this. And again, playing to the wall, not something you really want to do in one. This is a definitely do or die situation to put itself in there. Uh, and we'll be lucky not to be funded for it. Well, it'll be, it'll, I, look, I, it, it looks, Tatan looking very solid here. I think he's going to take this game one. <clears throat> but Grand is going to use the rest of this game, or at least he should be, to kind of get warm and think about how he's going to approach his play. And and maybe he can come into game two with a slightly better showing. I mean, look, he made it to the semifinals. So he's probably, <clears throat> he's probably a bit better than what we're seeing from him out here. And he'll definitely want to show that in game two. Yeah, and this is the tier where you're going to have a combination of both one, one's mains and, and guys who aren't necessarily one's mains, but kind of want to get better at the game and as such have opted to, to play in this type of a circuit um, to improve on their skills. So also Grand maybe just uh, realizing, hey, I wasn't warmed up when I got here. Let me just go ahead and take this game to do as many things as I feel like I would be doing in free play uh, just to feel warmed up and uh, to get ready for this next match. We do have seven to go, or seven matches in total, correct? Uh, indeed, yeah, this is a best of seven. <clears throat> so to yeah, Tand, so. to Tand looking very, very strong at the outset. My only, my only caveat and slight, because, uh, you know, based on this, you go, wow, is this going to be a clean sweep and a best of seven? And based on the evidence of this game, you would expect it will be, but... I don't want to commit to that until I've seen Grand play when he's warmed up. Fantastic demo there from Titan. Even though he's eight goals ahead, he just wants to deny Grand even further. And he apologizes in chat for what that's worth. But Titan dominating in game number one. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Grand mixes up his style. Looks like he may be having some ping issues there too. Showing 48, but red on the scoreboard. Yeah, uh, having some latency. It'll be interesting and... to see if maybe that was just, uh, you know, a little bit of fooling around, just uh, trying some things, get warmed up. I can tell you, we've had the incidents uh, with a couple of our IGL squads where if a player shows up having sort of just, just gotten home, not having that time to get on and warm up, it can be really, really difficult to feel comfortable yes. uh, playing a match like this when you just haven't had the time to run through your warm up routine. And then on top of it, I, his ping seems to be holding solid red here. I hope that's not going to continue to be an issue for him because, wow, in a 1v1, that is a huge handicap. Tell me about it <clears throat> as I hit my 180 ping playing 1v1s in Europe. But the, uh, probably for me, the most translatable 1v1, and I'm not even sure if you'd count it as a skill or an asset or what, but is the mental approach to the game. Because if you play enough 1v1s, I think it gives you a huge mental strength 
in terms of how you approach the game and, and not panicking, not getting overly freaked out. I, I think it's a, a huge asset that would translate to the other playlists. Yeah, well, the biggest thing that translates from 1v1 to the rest of the playlist is you not booming the ball away from you. So you're much more consistently taking control of the ball and then doing what you can with your car control uh, to be able to maneuver around just one other player. Not only that, but you spend a lot more time on the ball uh, than you would in the other mode. So you get more practice in what to do with the ball when you've got to keep it close to you. Uh, Satan, great example here. Satan just maintaining that position between the ball mm -hmm. and his own net, waiting it out here uh, to give himself an opportunity again. Yeah, probably my probably the mo the best educational series on Rocket League that I've seen. Or oh, is he going to get the re rebound? He does. Tatan took a little bit of time, but finds himself in front again in game two. Yeah, and like we said earlier, not not really advisable to try to take the ball up on the wall and be making these aerial plays. You start to get the sense that uh, Grand is maybe just here for the clips <laughs> and uh, maybe just trying to find his way onto that play of the week reel for the IGL. Uh, the IGL weekly uh, highlight reel. But we'll see. Yeah, oh, but no, unfortunate there. Tatan over committing. And yeah, here it, it seems as though <laughs> Grand's not going to be happy if he doesn't win this with a couple ceiling shots and a musky flick. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, Tatan. And there you go. And, and what it's reminding me of is, is uh, my. The best educational series I've seen so far is the. Uh, road to SSL without mechanics. It's flakes playing oh, yeah. a one playing one v one without mechanics, and it's just the simplicity with which he approaches the game is remarkable to see in and around this rank level. And it's absolutely stop trying to do stuff. Just you know, just be a solid player. Oh, Tatan, unusually they're flying at the ball and almost getting massively punished for it. Boost steal by Grant is going to leave Tatan a little stranded and, and Grant picking up all the boost on the way back to his own goal line. But this aerial play might land him in trouble. That ball going, yeah, sending the ball far too far from himself, giving Tatan an opportunity. But unusually for him, he gives yeah, it away with a heavy touch. Yeah, and you, you start to wonder if maybe Grant's strategy here is to kind of bait Tatan into... Uh, you know, playing a, a little more aggressively, doing things he, he might not otherwise do. Here's a great example. You know, you're starting to see Tatan making those commitments uh, that are a little over committing mm. here. And maybe that's grand strategy is to try to get into his head and get him thinking about doing things that uh, he otherwise wouldn't really be doing. It may not even be a strategy. I think this may well be how grand plays. And, oh my word, is that straight off kickoff? No, it's not. And he can't get the rebound. It may not be a strategy that Grant's given much thought to, but I think just the style of play might be wearing Tatan down a little bit where, where it shouldn't be. I mean, uh, what he's been doing has been working for him gangbusters. And if he just carries on with that, he's going to win the series easily. But he does seem to have changed it up a bit and he does seem to be extending himself a little more than he has been and that has been working so well for him but here you go he's going to take the two goal lead yeah agreed i think you definitely see a shift in his play style where the first uh, first game he, he really seemed as though he was being conservative keeping his wheels on the ground playing smart ball and uh, here i've seen a few instances where he's been over committed uh, particularly on a defensive play and you wonder if uh, grand isn't going to be able to capitalize on that here we have a kickoff goal Grand brings it within one. So, interesting change of pace here. Yeah, Grand That's going grand with the slower kickoff. Off. Wow, and it doesn't it doesn't get any more central than that. Um, uh, but a, a, a far quieter game than we saw in the first in terms of goals. To ten at this stage in the last game was already, I think, four, five, or six goals up. Yeah, well done by Titan there to just kind of wait that out. He needs to just calm down, take his time. You know, his mm. play style is, has worked for him. It's going to continue to work for him. Although now we see him starting to go up onto the wall. Uh, and he's fortunate he gets lucky with that. 
Yeah, it, it is a... <clears throat> you know, you almost... You know, the excitement of twos and threes, you know, t especially threes. You know, you've got six cars in the field. They're all racing around, competing for boost and possession and trying to boom the ball. And then when you come into ones, you know, when you've spent time learning learning mechanics, it can be quite frustrating not to be using them. You want to be using them, yet success in ones is almost looking to be as boring as possible. But here we go. Grand, I think, is going to bring this back within one and a far closer game two than we saw at any stage in game one. Yeah, you know, this is, the mo to me, the most mentally demanding game mode. It's a very mm. mental game. Um, you see a lot of games swing on just uh, mind games, really, where mm. it is very often a strategy in 1v1s to sort of come out and show a play style and then mix it up. Uh, and we may be seeing that here from Grand. I think Grand's trying to goad uh, Tatan into playing a more mechanical, uh, more flashy kind of a game. And uh, Tatan seems to be biting on that mm. a little bit here again, over committing defensively when he really doesn't need to. It's, de it's definitely worked when we have seen a, 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 a change of play from Tatan where game one oh, was beautiful. just... Oh my goodness, but he misses there. But the bump again on the spawn is going to let him go all the way and get it in. And I don't know, he always apologizes for the bumps and the demos. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that, that probably just makes it worse. But he has been, he hasn't been as grounded in this game as he was in that game one. And that game one, he won by a country mile. And here is like, really, he's just hanging in. He is in the lead. Let's be fair about that and clear on that, but it's not. It's a little, a little more sweaty, a little tighter than we saw in that first game. Yeah, and you know, it also seems like the mechanics that Tatane is employing are, are the type of mechanics we kind of want to see more often in rock in one v ones, where it's uh, flicks. You know, this type of uh, being able to power slide to this 180 degree angle here, where he gets his nose. You know, power slides around here gets his nose back towards the neck quickly. I really feel like the the other thing that's happening here, if we could check it, Grant's ping, uh, even though he's at a low number, it seems as though he's been in the red almost the entire uh, match. Yeah, l latency and packet loss, which is, which is never fun. Yeah, that really is the worst kind. Uh, again, there, we don't know if uh, that was just him not being able to get a handle on the ball or if he's just not getting good information back from the server uh, because of whatever reason. Te technically, it's usually your ISP. That's the problem when you have this type of situation. It's not necessarily Psionics or Epic's uh, servers. Um, and that's just, uh, it's really unfortunate to see. Uh, it can be a very, very big determining factor in a 1v1, <clears throat> as you well know. In indeed it is. <clears throat> but you have to play the cards you're dealt even if those cards are high pink cards. Joy key. Yeah, and so I just want to commit, comment on that, that the one decal that I just can't seem to stomach is this one that uh, maintains its uh, orientation irrespective of the angle of the car. The, the WIP. Distressing to me. No, yeah. no, no, it is. It, it, it is a bit of a psychedelic one. I, I quite like it, although I, I, and I played with it for a little while, but uh, you can only play with it so much. Tatan, however, is a big fan, and I think it's part of his strategy to have that uh, to have that decal. He's played with it in all the matches I've cast with him. Well, it seems like Grand's ping is settled down here now. Uh, yeah, to where they're about even. They're both green, and they're both in the forty. So we'll see if he's uh, he's going to give this another chance. He does have uh, the opportunity to, to turn this around. And as we've seen uh, many times in 1v1 games, a big score differential with time on the clock really doesn't mean anything. Uh, and neither does a game differential here in a match with seven games to be played, uh, potentially. All right. Well, <clears throat> it's an important moment. If the tan takes this, then Grand is in the unenviable pos enviable position of having to reverse sweep in a best of seven, which is... A tough, tough ask. So he's going to need to look 
at playing a solid 1v1 strategy here and find a way to take this game. Comes in for the boost grab, but Tatan is okay for now. Both finding themselves high on the wall. Tatan comes out second best there. Grand, though, making a mistake. He didn't need to be flicking like that. He would be done far better to turn and look to take control. So now he's got some defensive work to do in his goal line, which he does... To be fair, he does pretty well, and now he has an offensive opportunity. This is better from him. Taking his time. Oh, my word. And just a touch toward goal almost works out. And he keeps possession and, importantly, the boost to Tan having to rush and challenge. Which is exactly what yeah. Grant wants him to be doing. This is much better from Grant. He does look like he's decided that he needs to be spending a lot more time on the ground and there we go it works out goal number one goes to grant he leads for the first time yeah you get the sense that maybe this was a ping problem uh for those first two games because they're definitely showing a different type of player here more uh, patient uh, sticking close to the ball um making those low 50s rather than trying to do crazy stuff off the wall so be interesting to see if that wasn't a determining factor and he can turn this around he's got plenty of time um and just two games down out of a seven game series so let's see what he's able to do here and we see the volume of goals going down every game i mean the first game was just an absolute goal fest and then far fewer goals in the last game and here we are okay well tatan is gonna level it up but two goals in the first minute 20 seconds so, yeah, both players looking to be far more controlled and less out there. Like, how can, how can we maintain possession? Working out well for Tatan, and he levels it up. Yeah, I took advantage again. It's interesting, grand strategy here to uh, just let him go ahead and take the touch. Uh, again, such a mental game once. Uh, oh, and it's very close to a doomsday dish there from Grand. But again, still trying to make those two, three style kind of plays. Oh, and uh, Tintan going for the, the demo and net and just misses. Uh, it's another interesting strategy uh, from him. <laughs> oh, oh, and he gets it. And, and then by return, Grand, <laughs> Grand says to Tintan, now that's how you do it. The problem with Tintan's effort at that is he broadcast it from almost the midway line. Uh, Grand saw him coming for some distance where here Grand get, it was at a much shorter distance and Tatan did not see it coming. Grand again ahead. Yeah, and uh, like we said, definitely seems to be settling down into a more traditional 1v1 play style here. <laughs> yeah, this is stuff takes control. All he's got to do is really get one more touch on it if that. If that. And uh, now he's got a two goal lead. So the whole uh, momentum of the match shifting here in favor of Grant. Going to be, I want to see how Tatan responds to this because there's been a definite shift in the thinking, the strategy, the play from Grant. And it does mean Tatan's got to be aware of that and adjust accordingly. But I think quite simply, he's got to go back to what he was doing in the first game, which was nothing crazy, like he's doing right now. Not go in the, oh my word, but he does... He does need to sort out his empty net shots. He's missed open nets four or five times in the series. If he can nail that and just keep it on the ground, I think he's well positioned to level things out here and then regain the lead. Yeah, agreed. And then now we're starting to see more of the match that I, I anticipated looking at this on paper. And, you, you know, I want to believe Grant's internet has now finally settled down and uh, given him these opportunities. Although... Tatan's smart to bring it back within one, playing this ball slowly uh, out of the corner, just waiting for the bounce. Not the best positioning for Grand there. You kind of mm. want to be able to clear that off the wall before you let it drop down, or you don't have much of a chance of stopping a shot off that bounce. Yeah, and there Tatan just maintaining pressure through presence. He wasn't doing anything, he was just there. I know Lethemir likes to say, you know, you put pressure on by just existing. And he existed yes. very well there, and Grand succumbed to the pressure with a, an error in his positioning and defense. Yeah, and you know, again, you gotta start to question, you know, every time Grand goes up on the wall, it seems like Tatan wants to go up on the wall. Never advisable in ones, really. Um, but you get that same sort of uh, indication that the, the mental game of Grand's trying to play here 
is maybe try to get to Tan to commit to things that aren't his usual bread and butter um, to make a make make some mistakes um, and open up some opportunities. Look, when you when you're out there playing the game, I mean, we're sitting here watching the game externally, and we can sort of see the see the bigger picture. But when you're out there on the field. It's intimidating when you've got a player going up the wall when he's looking for the air dribble, the ceiling shot. And, and, and when you're pressed up against your goal line, you can succumb quite easily to that pressure. And it does go back to the mental approach of the game in terms of just don't panic. Just watch the ball. Be, be, be solid. Watch the ball and respond accordingly. Oh. Tan put a nice shot on, but Grand was there for it. You get a sense that Grand may be now adopting the tactic of just letting Tatan take as many shots as he wants to and just be ready to, to make the stop so he can kind of put the, put the wrap on this here and just put one of those wins up on the board for himself. Yeah, he's maintaining the boost control at the midfield. Just trying to play smart. It'll be interesting to see what Tatan's answer to this more conservative defense from Grand is going to be. He's going to have to come up with something Grand hasn't seen just yet. Grand, uh, smart to wait for this to come down off the wall. He's controlling here. He knows all he has to do is make a low 50. Mm. Uh, and this should just about wrap it up if he's able to put this in, which he should be able to. So. And he does a much, much better <clears throat> game from Grand. And it, and it seemed to make Tatan a little uncomfortable where Grand was being a lot more patient, a lot more solid, a lot more grounded. And... A little bit of frustration coming out from Tatan, not being able to find a way. When Grand was coming at him, it was easy enough to just let him wait for him to miss the ball, pick it up, keep it on the ground, and escort it into the net. But when your opponent is not doing that job for you, it's a little harder and you've got to start getting a bit more proactive. And that can be a exactly. tough shift. <clears throat> but Grand Very does much. take a game. Yeah, and done it well, and, you know, I'm starting to believe that uh, <clears throat> maybe there is something to, <clears throat> excuse me, this mental aspect. Uh, Grant does sort of present as one of those kind of players that you really want to get in your head um, and try to get you doing things you're not comfortable with, and finally has some success with it, although that ping still jumping around for him uh, as high as 68 there, so let's get this next one rolling while he's still... Uh, while it's while the make hay while the sun shines fenric how you doing good to see you in chat awesome ninja hello and welcome game number four why is this not happening oh my word there we go game indicator is on Tatan has two, Grand has one, and Tatan's going to take the very early lead in game four. Straight off the kickoff, got the better of it there, and just waited for the rebound with the touch. Grand landing up own goaling that, although it was probably going in anyway. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see, you know, Tatan, uh, for being a very, you know, conservative, uh, smart player, it's also a bit one-dimensional, and here Grand beats him off the wall um, with a quick touch. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if, you know, we talked about how this is a mental game. It'll be interesting to see how many speeds Tatan has. You know, we don't, we don't really expect him to be able to overcome a mental player like Grand uh, with a one-dimensional approach. That's a that's a very solid point, and we did, he did lose the last game. I think because he couldn't figure out a way to adapt to Grant's new style of play. So let's see. Here he comes. Does he follow this up in the air? He does. It's an overcommit. And if Grant can land, he's going to have an open net. He picks up the corner boost. He rushes and scuffs his shot. He had so much time. He could have waited to control that. And it does allow Tatan to get back and clear it off the backboard. And now Tatan with an open net if he can land control, which he can't do. And two, two opportunities, one at either end for both players, not pounced upon. Yeah, and you know, seeing some high bouncing balls here, now we get Tatan going up on the wall. It's almost as if Grand is really winning this mental battle, uh, sort of wearing Tatan down and uh, trying to force him to make plays and maybe not comfortable or maybe just not what he would normally be doing. Uh, and here, mm. Grand again, 
controlling the ball around the corner. Very much in a 2v2 style play here. Not a 1v1 play per se. This is very much something you might see uh, in a 1v1 situation in a different game mode. So um, really want to see what else Titan has to throw at this. He may be in trouble here if he can't mix it up. Well, it is Grand who is in the lead, catching up, finding a one, coming from a one goal deficit, leveling it up, taking the lead, and oh, nicely done by Tatan, but Grand doing very well, takes the shot, picks up the boost, but he hasn't maintained control, and Tatan does make the open net on the other side to level things up. Grand doing very well with the boost steal, but didn't look, wasn't looking beyond, like what, what was he going to do after the boost steal? And Tatan taking an opening and an open net. Yeah, sometimes falling into that uh, impulse to, to make a boost steal. It's like a nice bump here from Grand open up some space for himself. But sometimes going, oh, wow, unfortunate. Uh, couldn't get the handle on that with an open net. I, uh, and, and that's really the problem that you see with, with guys that play this more 2v2, 3v3 kind of style is just, again, not, again, same thing here. The mm. inability to just slow down, take command of the ball, and, you know, of course, that's always a good answer, is to just demo the guy. <laughs> Indeed it is. But, yeah, uh, and, and probably what I'm liking here is, is it does make me think about my own 1v1 game because so many instances here where the players have time to get control, but they, but they respond to the play as if they're under massive pressure from two other players yeah and it's funny it's hard to break that habit it's one of the biggest differences playing 1v1s is to not have that panic moment when you've got a, a little time alone with the ball uh where you know a 2v2 the 3 v 3 that's you know you have to deal with that very quickly you've got a lot of people that uh sometimes teammates yes <laughs> that are eager to try to very the ball very often them. very often teammates yes. <laughs> So it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely a mental aspect of 1v1s that you have to work on and develop. Uh, Grand doing a good job to just barely keep that out uh, off the post. And again, both of them going up for a ball here where the smarter play may have very well been just to wait for this ball to come down. Uh, he's going to have a tough time with this. Good job getting control there. You kind of want to see these guys uh, exhibit that same control that uh, Grand just was showing us being able to dribble that, dribble that ball off the post in a way, um, but, you know, on the offensive side of the play rather than just on the defense. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's you, you become used to being under pressure on the ball. Oh, Grant doing very well to get the clear on that. That was heading netward. Um, you're, you, you're used to being under pressure, you know, with a player right on top of you, but... Very often, and this is why we struggle with the open nets, and fortunately, Tatan not struggling there, leveling it up again. You know, when you do have time, it's almost... The thought is, well, what am I supposed to do now? I don't have a player I'm trying to flick or get around. I just have to keep the ball in front of me. And, and, we, and we're just probably less practiced in that. Absolutely. I mean, that's 100% correct. Like I said, a lot of it, uh, you know, working with Randy, one of the big fundamentals you talked about was you know you have time you you don't need to and not just time but you have an entire field uh so you know let's say there's offensive pressure like this where you've got time to just dump that ball into a corner and gather yourself some boost and regroup yes um, it's it's really is a very different mode in terms of the mentality um and good to see Titan here kind of re reverting back to his first game strategy of uh, just being conservative, try to stay close to the ball, uh, try not to give Grand any big openings, and uh, try to keep the mistakes down to a minimum, at least which you can mitigate with your skills. And there we go, a great example. Make your opponent jump in the air, burn some boost, and then try and come back on them. He did that well, but Grand has gotten possession, and now Tatan over committing and he may well pay for it, although I'm not sure Grant can get the angle. He can't, but it is so awkward. Tatan oh, needed to get that car cam off. Got confused with the ball on his roof with car cam on, but he does have possession. 13 seconds to go. Are we going to see an overtime, a 1v1 overtime here in game number four? Grant is behind, 
but there has been a momentum swing over the last two games. Oh, is he going to get it? Oh, no, so he doesn't close. get the zero second goal. Ceiling shot. Yeah, oh, it's I good to see that. Satan has sort of gone back to, you know, his original uh, play style of just being patient. What is two shots on the net, three shots on the net. Grand just holding his ground there and gathering the boost here. Be interesting if it's Titan missed a midfield boost, so he's going to be low here. Be interesting to see how Grand does this. He's going to try for the air dribble, and he's going to do it and take game four. And there we go. Two, right? Ties it up. We are two all. We're down to a best of three. And a, and a yeah. big shot coming off for Grand. And there we go. I mean, we we said it in game one that we ha we had to see how Grand responds and how better how much better he does once he's warmed up. And he has grown into the series. Went behind two games, but has found a way back in. And now it's Tatan that's got to kind of regroup and figure out where he goes to from here. Yeah, and you know, I think part of this, the intimidation factor, I think Grand was maybe going for that. I think he may have had the thought, I need to warm up. I'm um, having ping issues. Let me just start to show uh, that I'm attempting a ceiling shot. I'm attempting a flip reset. This kind of, kind of plays that would make your opponent consider that uh, you might be a higher ranked player than them, that you might have things in your arsenal that they're not prepared for. And we've seen Titan sort of respond to that. Um, he's smart here to take his time with the kickoff, but again, even just uh, foregoing a kickoff like that can come off as very intimidating for players, particularly when you're at this rank um, and you're kind of just getting your feet, your footing under you in the 1v1 space. Yeah, it's, uh, those little tactics are interesting and it's always, it's always, well, in any mode of Rocket League, but particularly ones, is you want to do things that make your opponent uncomfortable or that they don't expect because the unexpected is going to make you uncomfortable and and i i used to find that very intimidating when the when a player decided to wait back on the kickoff because then you were like oh my word what what's he gonna do and grand doing very well here taking control of the series and starting to look quite threatening for Titan. yeah it seems as though he's warmed up um you know, and it's just needed those first four games to get warmed up, I guess. But now he's mixing it up. And that's really like when we talk about what a mental game this is. Oh, and this would be an opportunity for Jatan here. Just missing that shot. But oh, unfortunately, he gets a pop up. Doesn't really get much power on the shot. Oh, ends up getting a pop over him anyway. So, wow, it'd be interesting to see. Jatan still kind of maintaining that more conservative, you know, smart play style. Um, and, you know, as much as a player can intimidate you with those skills, uh, if you're putting points on the board, they, they've got to take notice of that as well. Well, Tatan brings it down to one, and he should have a goal here. Oh, no, he misreads that completely. And he's a little bit awkward, out of position, out of boost. And gives away, decides, opts to back away from the play and give grand possession. Oh, yeah, Grant seems very happy well. now to just slow mm. this down and take the 50s when he can get them. Yeah, he's playing a much smarter game here. And for for the moment, has the, does have the better of Tatan. Tatan seems to be seems to be snatching at the play a little bit. Yeah. For example, does. there that was uncharacteristic of him, and ordinarily. And look, it works out for him, and maybe that was the better play. Maybe that is him stepping things up a little. Normally, he would have looked to control that, to dribble and maybe a flick. But now, opting for the booming shot against the back wall. Grant doesn't pick up the rebound, but Tatan does. Yeah, and you know, that's what you want to see from Tatan. You want to see him mix it up like this. You know, he is being a little more, oh, and a lot of bumping here see who comes out the better of this well to ten doing a good job he's up in the air more now um he's up on the walls more now definitely seems to be mixing things up looks like he's going for bounce dribbles here where uh he's putting uh grand in a situation where he's got to defend um but uh, anticipating grand's defense and where those balls are going to bounce so interesting mix up with Titan here he seems to be really successful with these sort of backflip uh 
tackles where, you know, he manages to get the ball over Grand, just back flipping over his head. Grand going to go for his flip here. And, oh, he, and gets he gets it. it. He finally pulls it off. Oh, he there he says finally. in chat, finally. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he's been trying to hit that shot. Ceiling game shot. One. Well, let's see if that's so, going to be enough of an intimidation for, for Titan to, to respond and uh, make a mistake. Oh, wow. He reads the fake. Well done. Reads it very well. The immediate response. Oh, that wasn't... Oh, my word. That was... Wow. That was a that was a kickoff that didn't work out the way you wanted it to from Grand over there. Not at all. Interesting here in game four that we're... Uh, Tied up two to two, or three to three, sorry. And here we go with the mind games. You know, we talked mm. about some mental games. Um, I think Titan's response to that ceiling shot was to do this and uh, sort of try to catch Grand uh, cheating up and challenging. And uh, good to see Titan mixing things up here, trying some different stuff. Well, he goes in front. But so much game left here and so many possibilities. Now, Hudson, I have a question for you. Or, or just a little while ago, there was some a lot a lot of bumping where they, where they were very close to each other, bumping one another. Okay, Tatan going to take a two-goal lead here. Still half a game to go, but getting it past Owen Grand. There you go. Under pressure with Tatan just being there. Grand trying the elaborate clear. Doesn't get a good touch and giving Tatan an open shot at goal. So... We spoke at the end of the last series about the about rule one. So what happens when there's a rule one in a one v one? You know, it's funny you should say that. I was gonna I was gonna bring it up at the beginning <laughs> of the match here. To say uh, you know it's a very odd circumstance when we have a rule one in a one v one because then it just seems as though it's uh, us against the clock. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see it being kept in a 1v1 to 10. Oh, somehow gets enough in front oh, of man. it. Grand almost squeezed it past him. And now to 10 with the physical play, the demo gets rid of the attacker. And now to 10 looks like he's wanting to take control of this game. Beautiful runner, beautiful execution. And now he has a three goal lead to 10 looking stronger and stronger now with each goal that he goes further in front. Yeah, and it's back to his, his original play style, keeping the ball close. Um, he didn't really commit to that extra touch until right at the very end, and that's what you want to see. You want to make those decisions uh, at the last moment, as late as possible. Of course, I also would be curious to know if Grand is having pain issues again. It certainly seems like he doesn't uh, doesn't look like he's where he wants to be as much. So I might guess he's maybe having pain issues again. Well, just looking at the scoreboard quickly, it doesn't seem like he is. Uh, looks like a strong connection right now. So I don't think he's being plagued by that. And now, interestingly, a four-goal lead for Tatan. Three of those four goals have come through kickoffs. Uh, he's kind of... He's, he's red. And, and in those kickoffs, Grand has not gone for the kickoffs. He's either stayed back gone for boost or gone for, gone for a delayed kickoff and Tatan has read those and has completely s smashed Grant on those kickoffs and it's put him in a very strong position here with a minute to go yeah and again we're just talking about that being part of the mental part of the game oh this is not a smart touch from Grant at all here um, Tatan doing a great job he's, he's smart to just play conservatively here um, wait for Grant to make another mistake Grant now resorting back to, to plays off the wall and such. Yeah. And, uh, the smartest thing Tatan can do here is just be patient, uh, wait for the mistake. There you have one, uh, and just capitalize it when it happens. Yeah, and it's you been a good sense. Maybe, uh, maybe Grand sees the five goal deficit and the time on the clock, and uh, just kind of decided that uh, maybe he's going to take his best chance uh, in game six. And Tatan is this is where he's most comfortable. You've got an opponent chasing the game when. Uh, Tatan has not been comfortable when Grand is not chased. 
where, where Grand has taken his time and looked to control the ball. Tatan has then struggled and he's looked to try and push the game forward. But when Grand is chasing the game like he's doing now, Tatan's quite happy to just sit back, let the play happen, and he will pick up the pieces after the play and go and score. Yeah, and you know, looking back at that goal, Tatan's smart to jump away. I think Grand was trying to go for a demo there. I guess what he's trying oh. to do here. Not enough speed on that ball for that play, but <laughs> starting to show uh, here that Hold Tatan... on, Grand is, Grand is AFK. What is happening? His ping shows wow. fine, but he's not, but he's completely AFK. So I don't know if he's disconnected or what the situation is, but Grand is out of the game right now. And maybe there are, are some connection issues that we're not seeing in the uh, in the ping meter. Yeah, you know, if you're... Uh, the play must go on. If you're to 10 here, smart play. Yeah. Just uh, let the ball roll around in the corner and let the clock run out. Smartest thing you could possibly do. Not really any benefit to you scoring any more goals here. It's not going to buy you anything. <laughs> well, um, it looks, it looks like Tatan, to <laughs> he's just going for execution now. Okay, Grand suddenly back in the game. I'm not sure what happened there. But uh, the last two or three goals coming through whatever issues that Grand had. But reminiscent there, certainly in the second half, hot Zen, of, of game one, in terms of how mm -hmm. Grand was playing and how Tatan was responding to that play. Yeah, and wow, lighting it up there to 10, 10 on 12 shots for 1,500 points. Uh, yeah, even in 1v1, that's a very impressive uh, number to put up. All right, well, we do have to 10 now with three wins. He has two bites at the apple here to take this entire series. But Grand clearly, clearly having some issues. Um, and, and, and it's a pity it kind of came apart for him there because the two games leading up to this, he was looking very strong and it swung the momentum very much in his favor. Yeah, it sure did. You know, it's odd. You, you feel like you're seeing two different grands here. Uh, one uh, happy to do unconventional things, go up the wall, try to go for aerials or ceiling shots. And the other, you know, playing a smart 1v1 play style, you know, staying grounded, uh, staying close to the ball and uh, minimizing his exposure uh, on defense. All right, well, here we go. We are in game six out here on Wasteland Night. Do or die time for Grant. Tatan can take it right here. Now, it'll be interesting to see. We also have seen, you know, if you watched uh, the Salt Mine, mm -hmm. Johnny Boy uh, in his 1v1 tournaments and show matches, um, our MG homie, he's got them as well. It's always interesting in this circumstance to see that Grand may have just been playing this all along, uh, may have just been waiting to pounce here. Um, and, you know, of course, dealing with those ping issues, that can get you really tilted uh, in a 1v1 situation. Um, it'll just be interesting to see if he can keep Tatane out of the net and the answer to that right here four minutes and 20 seconds left and Tatan says no easy easy goal all right and there Grand had the opportunity he had a bit of time to take control of that but hitting it away Grand's asking if forfeits count I don't know what he means by that um he he he, at this point, he can forfeit, uh, as far as I understand the rules, as long as you've played uh, half the matches that would have been necessary to play, a forfeit uh, will not penalize you. It's the end of the season. I think he's probably just concerned about not uh, forfeiting his ability to play in the summer circuit, which uh, I think okay, he certainly would not, would not do. Uh, I believe okay. the ideal rule is that as, half, as long as half the games have been played, um, and someone forfeits that that's perfectly uh just their prerogative for sure all right you hate to see all it right. though i mean you you get a yeah, feeling of that course. He, maybe it's just he's just gotten a bit tilted um and that's unfortunate it is unfortunate 
Oh dear. Looks like oh we have some toxicity going on in Discord. All right, so Grand has forfeited claiming I some toxicity in Discord. Whether that's correct or not, I don't know. Um, and I'm just going to screen grab this just so that we have it. Um, yeah, to my knowledge, um, it's funny. This is something in the Hootie organization that we take really seriously. Um, players on separate teams uh, should not be in each other's discords. Uh, it's very much frowned upon by the IGO. Uh, okay. I'd be interested to see where those conversations were happening. As long as they're happening within the IGL Discord, there's recourse for Grand if he wants to to bring it to uh, administration's uh, attention. Uh, but if this conversation was happening in a Discord outside of IGL, um, whichever player has gone into the other player's Discord may be subject to disciplinary action. Um, we've we've definitely seen that. You don't want to be going into, and we have a very strict moratorium on this uh, with our franchise, is that you do not ever, ever, under any circumstance, communicate with other teams, particularly in their discords. The only people who are supposed to communicate are captains, um, which obviously, in this case, uh, both of these guys would be captains, but it's yes. really a matter of who, who went into which discord, when, and what they said. Uh, that's definitely something that we do not uh, allow uh, and it will be certainly dealt with uh, if that is the case. Unfortunately, you hate to see this uh, happen. All right. Uh, well, be here and having a good time and have fun. And uh, it's unfortunate to see it have to come to an end like this. All right. Well, it has come to an end. Tatan takes it. He finishes third. Uh, he takes third place in the in the IGL Spring Circuit, one v one tier four. Congrats to him. Um, and we'll do what we need to do on the back end to get um, uh, to see if there's if, if this needs to go further. But through a forfeit from Grant, Tatan takes it, and uh, Tommaso Bocci in in chat saying his experience with Tatan is that he's a very uh, very good player. Um, he lost against this guy in chat and responded very positively, but. We'll see. We'll see if I can get the screenshots and we'll leave it in the hands of we'll leave it in the hands of, of IGL to deal with. But there we go. Tatan takes it. And being a best of seven means we're almost out of time. And now well, no, no, we're almost out of time. We are out of time and have to go pretty much immediately to the next 1v1, which is the final of this tier, which is shameless up against I forget who the other is. I'll get it in a moment. But we're going to get into that almost immediately. So I'm going to sort out the overlay, get the, let the All team, right. the, the players know, and that will get rolling. My, uh, refresh my beverage and uh, relieve Yeah, you myself. do that. You will be right back. Go do it. You've got a few, you got a few minutes. All righty. So the final of this very series is Team MGG versus Shameless. MGG versus Shameless. <clears throat> Just going to sort out the overlays. So Team MGG, seven wins, just one loss, up against Shameless with exactly the same record. So this is some tight stuff, and it does look like the two best players have made it through to the final. So going to be very cool to see how this plays out.
Let's just set up the lobby. Oh, I've made that mistake again. Okay. Okay, Tommaso, are you shameless? I'm slow, but I get there eventually. All right, lobby is up. And we're back. We are back. And this should be very interesting. Let's get, look at this win-loss record from both of them. Uh, Hot Zen, seven wins, one loss apiece. Yeah, this should be a really interesting. What tier are we on here? Say so what? Same tier. This is this is the final of the last one we just did. This is tier ah, four. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Hot Zen, if the teams don't show, it'll be you and I. Oh, that'll be exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it will be exciting, but it, it, but probably <laughs> good for you. I think I've played a 1v1 in two weeks. Oh, really? Uh, well, I don't generally win on my uh, on my, on my my own stream. <laughs> well, we've got Shameless, so hopefully, hopefully I won't be forced to 1v1 Shameless. All right, well, I've gotten responses from both captains. Awesome. Okay, good. So they'll be in here short. Ah, Shameless is in. And I can't help thinking about... Um, oh, my God, I've forgotten his name. The TV show Shameless. What's the dude's name? The main oh, guy? Oh, yeah, William H. William H. Macy. Oh, William H. Macy. He's, he's, such he's, a great show. And, and, and he is fantastic. He is such an outstanding actor. Amazing. I... I I can't think of anyone that's ever played a degenerate better. <laughs> really, really amazing show. I, you've, and you've just now reminded me that I've, I haven't finished it yet. I'm not caught up quite yet. So, no gosh, I, I, no, listen, I don't have them to give. I, I watched season one. I haven't watched any of the seasons since then. Oh, I'm on like, I think I'm on season five. <laughs> All right. Well, there, you see, many years ago, I gave up my series watching time so I could play Rocket League. And I almost never watch anything anymore. It's quite sad. I spend all my time playing Rocket League. And I'm still only oh, uh, a champ. I'm still only a champ one. I, I've i always, I think, because I was uh, the brother to twin sisters. And yeah. always they were, you know, mom and dad in their room, sisters in their room. I was always on my own. So I always had a TV playing. Uh, when I would go to bed, and that's what I catch most of them. And uh, I just finished episodes, which is uh, that Matt LeBlanc got a, a very highly recommend that as well. It's hilarious talking about. Oh, that I did watch. That that was very good. I I enjoyed that very much. Yeah, I just finished it up last night. I love the ending. It was great. Well, we got every. This is a one v one. So oh, they all in one here. No? Yeah. yeah, they are. But watched MGG. So uh, well, it says but watched. So but watched is actually MGG. So there you go. Let's go. Game number one, best of seven. This is the final. Let's go. And this should be very tight with both both teams, both players with the same win-loss ratio. This is gonna this is gonna be good. Let's go. Oh, Speedy right kickoff. Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. the early demo can watch get around this. Oh. 
Okay, I'm not sure that was the best way. He could have controlled that round, but but he does have possession and control. Shameless with a touch away, but but Wash still. And yeah, he's just waiting it out. I think he's trying, just waiting for Shameless to burn through all his boost and get the open net. Getting his car in front, doing very well controlling this. A very, very well constructed goal. Patient. He took all the time he needed. Waited for Shameless to be out of position and out of boost. Yeah, and most importantly, didn't panic that he was low on boost. He chose to take a couple of low 50s, just keep the ball bouncing in front of the net, and uh, didn't need any boost to, to carry it home and take the lead here with just uh, 20 seconds into the first game. And Shameless definitely seems the, the more hurried of the two players early on. It does work out for him there as he levels it up. And just trying to, to win that point, win that goal through sheer pace. And it did find Bush, but Wash getting an unfortunate touch and getting himself out of position and Shameless into the open net. Yeah, he kind of put Wash into a no-win situation there. That first shot was on target, so he had to go up and do something. He just couldn't find an angle to get a clear away, which you really don't want to do in ones. You want to try to keep the ball as close to you as possible, but forcing him to make that save just as good as putting it against the, the crossbar uh, and having a second shot. And now Bitwash doing what he did for the first goal, just trying to be there, control the play, he's not panicking, making shameless, making shameless act, making him do things, making him use his boost. But he does get a little bit of space here, but Bitwash coming right back into it. Yeah, I didn't quite get the right trajectory for that uh, reset off the ceiling, but right off the bat, surprising, you know, if you would compare the last match uh, to this one, seemingly a little more mechanical play, uh, definitely more uh, time in the 1v1 space as watched. Again, just keeping this ball on the baseline, moving it back and forth from side to side, waiting for an opportunity. He's got uh, Shameless basically out of boost here, and nothing he would be able to do to stop that. And I, I can attest from personal experience the, the sort of play that MGG Bitwashed here is, is, is doing is it's enormously frustrating. The person just won't go away. And every time you touch the ball, they seem to be in a position to respond. They get the 50. And, and you almost start to think that all the luck is going, in their, is going their way. But it's, and it's, it's quite deliberate and, and incredibly annoying, but incredibly effective. Yeah, and part of the mind game here from Shameless's point of view you know, he's very low on boost, but he doesn't want to broadcast that. He doesn't want to let Wash know that he's low on boost and give him the advantage. He did a really good job to sort of play that. Mm. Now he's got the boost. See what he's going to do here with an offensive attack. Such a mental game, the ones game. Mm. He grabs that boost, and now he's stolen the resource. And maybe now try to give Wash a bit of his own medicine. Yeah, I like how he handled that. He was incredibly patient. We're realizing... I think after conceding that second goal, realizing the game plan of but watched here was, okay, I can out, I can out patience you, and he did that very well. And here he comes, takes it across the field, took his time, didn't panic, didn't rush, just kept. He was never supersonic at any point. Waited for the moment, got the shot off, and we're leveled up at two apiece. Yeah, and this is an exciting, very well matched one v one game here. Both of these players obviously having a bit more experience than the players we saw in the last match in the 1v1 space. So it'll be interesting to see what the tactics each one of these guys employs as the match goes on. Uh, you know, as you see here, boost becoming a big priority. Is, you know, we teach people in uh, 2v2s and 3v3s not to go for boost over ball. And again, another aspect of 1v1 that's very different is there are a lot <laughs> of instances where you do want to go and yeah. grab the boost as shameless as here you want to steal those resources from your opponent and put them in just that position where you've got the advantage in terms of resource to collect this ball and put it away wash really not much else he could have done there except maybe get a pinch into the corner rather than mm. toward his own net or maybe even let the ball roll off the wall and come round behind it um but it's the pressure of knowing your opponent is close to you and and not being, and I don't know, I, I haven't seen either player make much use of their rear view here. 
and, and that's something that does become quite important in 1v1 is to see what's going on behind you. How close is your opponent? Where are they relative to what you're doing? Nicely done here by Washed. He gets it leveled up. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, Wash doing a good job of catching Shameless, prioritizing boost over ball there, and just not ready for the bounce out of the corner. Uh, Ty ended up at three. This is exciting. Well, I suppose the the where you're prioritizing boost in 1v1 tends to be more to be stealing boost rather than getting it for yourself. And there, Shameless desperately trying to get boost for himself, going going for it there and being punished. As you would in almost any other game mode. Yeah, and one of the skills I'm seeing from uh, Shameless here that is rare, uh, particularly at this division, and he should be commended for it, is the ability to dribble in ball camp. Uh, he's done it twice now, setting these flicks up in front of the net where he's been able to carry the ball without having to switch into car cam. Um, and one of the things you'd be surprised to learn about that is it keeps your opponent in view as opposed to when you're dribbling in car cam with a ball on top of your car. A lot of times you're obscuring your ability to see your opponent. Um, that's actually a very high level skill uh, to see and both these guys really, in my in my opinion, playing well above uh, the rank that they're in. So mm. uh, it'll be interesting to see who is the better here. The flip reset, you don't see those a lot in Diamond 1 <laughs> and Diamond 2. <laughs> my word. I wonder what yeah, they're... Oh, guys. my word. Oh, overextend there by Washed. Shameless does have an open net, but he's taken too long and Washed gets back and averts the goal. The Vert's going behind by two with 20 seconds left. Shameless now just wants to run down the clock. Oh, does very yeah, well to skip over there. his opponent there. That was that was fantastic. Yeah, and again, if you watch this on the replay, another, if we get a chance to see it, another instance where when he picks this ball up, doesn't seem to be bothered to, move, to switch into car cam at all. Uh, that's a sign of somebody who's got a lot of dribbling experience under the belt. Wow, now, now, now you've made me want to go and practice that, Hot Zed. Oh, the kickoff goal. That's going to make things nervy. No, he doesn't get it. Oh, he's beamed oh, it. Okay. And he just stops <laughs> knowing that, oh, well, I had my chance. I blew it. And the zero seconder from Shameless. Shameless takes game number one. Yeah, so that was one of the things that uh, was first things that Randy pointed out to me is that a lot of times... When you're dribbling in car cam, you really don't have the ability to see around the ball. And developing the ability to keep the ball on top of your car without having to go into car cam, as you do it, you, you start to see there's a lot. Oh, wow, look at the ping. Shameless taking this game, even though he is uh, suffering from some very high ping uh, at times, it looks like. Okay, I must have missed it because as I looked, it was back at 44, which seems... Which seems, in, in for me, a delicious region of ping. <laughs> oh, yeah. And here we go with game two. Yeah, you'll, if you give that a try, you'll notice it. what it does is that you can also position the ball on your car to change your view of the field. Um, it's a very difficult... Uh, once you've got dribbling down and going into that, it's a very difficult uh, skill to pick up, but uh, a huge advantage to you if you're able to do it in terms of being able to see your opponent. All right. Well, here we are. Game two. Shameless with the game one advantage. Does it extend in the next five minutes? Oh, oh fancy stuff there from Washed. But Shameless reads it and very speedy is going to get overcome it, get it, get control and bang it into the open net. Yeah, you really don't want to be uh, making those kind of attempts, maybe till you're in the Grand Champ range. Uh, and it's just something that's an automatic, easy goal for you every time. But, you know, you can't fault these guys for uh, for trying to hit that clip that might get them into that weekly, uh, particularly since we're here in the playoffs uh, and the finals, get them into that uh, weekly Indie Gaming League highlight reel. And uh, Wash lucky to have this fall. It seemed like Shameless just couldn't quite get the read oh. in front of them. Yeah. The the panicky attempted clear on your goal line and not getting the read. One apiece.
Now, do you feel like Wash maybe put that up the wall again, trying to set himself up and then realize he was a little low on resources, or maybe he's just baiting Shameless in for that touch? Hard to tell. These are two very good players uh, playing a great game. <clears throat> I think Wash has got this as well, so he'll go up by one. Yeah, and another yeah. Uh, another fairly interesting thing is 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 the tier is of course diamond one, diamond two, but in the course of ten weeks of the of the tournament, it's always possible that players grind and land up. You know, it's quite possible one of these players has sort of reached champ one during the course of the season, and I'd be I'd be keen to know where what, how they've progressed personally in ranked through the course of the season. Well, you keep up with the play by play, and I will look into that. <laughs> okay, well, Shameless now. Oh, I think he saw the open net, wanted to have a go at it. He's been it a little bit, pushed it wide, given up possession, but Bit washed. Taking, taking the adventurous option of going up for the ball when he had the time and the space to wait for it to come down, and he may end up paying for that. He is. Shameless has the open net, and he's going to squeeze it past the right hand post and level things up for a 2v at two goals apiece. Yeah, and very even play here. Of course, there's about 16 different people named Shameless in the Rocket League tracker, so we'll have to see if we can't uh, flush that out here in a little bit. Okay. In the meantime, Shameless yeah. has level leveled things up and he's in control now. But a little bit worried about Wash coming behind him and there again not using the reverse camera to, or the rear view to see what's going on behind. But Wash now taking his time, waiting for Seamus to make a move. The bounce dribble, the dunk, he gets it in and goes up again. Yeah, great play. This is a very common tactic in 1v1. What you want to do is just make it so that the only thing the defender can do is hit the ball back to you. And you anticipate that, flip your car over, get all your wheels onto the ball to collect it. And have that slow rolling dunk. Indeed, Lee. Here to take the lead. Yeah, a lot of this oh, game is about nice. angles. Yeah, speaking yeah. of angles. Uh, that was Washington a great was a... angle. No, it was one of my favorite shots when I can get it right, is you just time it right, hit it off the hood of your car, and it goes flying into the net. Two goal lead here for MGG Bitwashed. Yeah, a big, a big consideration in 1v1s, you always want to keep yourself uh, between the ball and your net when you can. Uh, shameless follows us up on the wall and gets a decent clear, but he's had the boost stolen by Pitt. And you oh. see how he deals with this, broadcasting it. The one thing that is a huge difference as you go up in the tier level, and something we saw Bitwash actually do in the first game, is your ability to not panic uh, yes. when you're out of boost. All right, here he comes, taking his time, but the angle, he probably needed to be a bit more behind the ball there for the low 50 doesn't get it but he still has an opportunity on net yet this is awkward for shameless but washed hits the hits the post or oh, shameless i think for a moment thinking about going for the boost then went for the ball realizing that washed was going to get there first he's got an opportunity now he is low on boost washed gets there for the clear and will have an open net but he's going to push it wide he would have had three goals a commanding three goals but he keeps Shameless in the game, who's got an open net. If he can get the angle right and be fast enough, Wash gets back and steers it out of danger. Yeah, both players doing a really good job of uh, creating pressure and maintaining control here. Oh, he's just got to get one more touch on this. And it should be in. Oh, great job by a bit Wash. They cut that off. He did concede the boost, but it doesn't look like he's going to need it. And he'll go up by three. Sorry, just looking at it in chat here, Coco in chat says that Shameless is champ 2 div 2 and Washed is champ 1 div 2. Oh, okay, but that's in that's in 2v2. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they are, as you often see, most players have a higher rank in, in 2s and 3s than they do in 1s. Yeah, it just seems as though 
Oh, compared to the previous man. Wow, shameless. Minute 13 on the clock. He's not out yet. I mean, two goal differential in a 1v1 game is really not anything to rest on. Uh, Washington's going to have to continue uh, to maintain pressure here and to keep his defense up if he doesn't want to let this slip away. No, what, in 1v1s, there are always goals to be had. We saw it in the last series. I think it was game five where Tatan smashed four goals, three of them from kickoff goals. Oh, my word. But Washed will reestablish his three-goal lead. We saw three kickoff goals coming within the space of about half a minute. So it can change very quickly here. But Washed doing himself a very good favor by scoring that and re-establishing his cushion. Yeah, throughout this, uh, the, the, the series so far, though, it does seem as though Sheamus has made off uh, the better with the kickoff. And Wash has been kind of fighting that the whole time. He's done a really good job there. He's the boost steal. See if he can turn this around in time yet. Yeah. Nope. And Shameless is able to clear it away. Um, Shameless definitely seems to be getting the better of the kickoff game, uh, but doesn't seem to be bothering Wash very much at all. Yeah, I think one, once we're into open play, Wash is quite comfortable slowing it down, getting in the way, looking for the low 50s. Um, and that's, that's worked very, very well for him. And he has... And now he's dominating. He's he's going to take the second game, and things things leveled up. So certainly not a walkover for either of these players. They're gonna whoever wins this is gonna have to work for it. Yeah, and I think both both of them really doing a good great job of not making them very many mistakes. Um, Shameless, smart to carry this ball around. Although we are seeing a lot of the play here. Let's see if Shameless can get one more, just for. Morale. Just uh, for kicks, the indeed he does. Is shots, shots off of bounce dribbles. Uh, this is a great example where he just pops it up, gives himself an opportunity to take another touch. Very reminiscent of people who play 2v2. It's a very common uh, goal scoring strategy and the 1v1s that often present themselves in a 2v2 game. Um, these are the kind of goals you would expect to see in that type of a contest. So, don't think Shameless is going to have the time here. Well, and Wash is going to take it. So we're <coughs> one apiece. We are. Yep. Say what? Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, you see it there. I guess maybe it's just in between games. Shameless's ping tends to jump up very high, and then it settles down again. So. Yeah, I do have that sometimes where where it will uh, it'll kind of spike in the replays, and between mm -hmm. games, it's a weird thing. I think as the server maybe resets itself or some such. All right, let's go to the Forbidden Temple for Game 3. Going to be another close one. Sometimes sometimes with the best of five series, you can cast four series in a night, and three of them will be a sweep, so it becomes an early night. Not so with best of sevens. The four-game sweep is a rarity in any playlist. Yeah, you know, as you pointed out, and I, I didn't realize this until we had kind of uh, had it come up as a result of casting these matches, what a low percentage of these seven-game matches end up being sweeps. Uh, in fact, I think we've had quite a few of them go to seven games. Yeah, well, listen, you're, you're, you're most commonly seeing kind of the game five scenario, so... It's kind of like a full a full best of five each time, uh, but it, but it's fabulous and, and and it does highlight why best of sevens are so important in terms of weed, weeding out who is actually the best in a given matchup. Yeah, now I take back uh, what I said about Wash to sort of being on the the short end of the stick when it came to the kickoffs. He's definitely done something here. Uh, maybe he was trying to delay uh, in that first ga first game, uh, first couple of games, whereas now he's not shameless. Takes an easy one down the side. That was very nice, very down. nicely yeah. controlled. Took it up the wall, and once he knew he was past washed, he just gave it a tap and knew it was going to be too fast for Washed to catch up to it. Nicely executed, one apiece. Shameless getting the better of this kickoff, and it should be a kickoff goal. Indeed it is. 
And there we go. So, oh, yeah, it looked like a yeah, bit wash getting a little wash. high up on it. Well, he was mixing it up there. You can see he didn't really flip into the ball. He just kind of drove slowly up to it, hoping to get a low 50. And I think Shameless, when uh, when he sees that to be the case, he's going to punish for it. Um, definitely, again, now, seeming like he's coming out the better on the kickoff. And he's going to make Wash have to work for whatever he's going to get here. You see, once you've got that kickoff control, it really does give you the opportunity to maintain mm -hmm. that control and maintain that pressure here as Shameless has, has just Oof. done. Uh, and he'll go up three to one. But what you do off the kickoff in a 1v1 game is really sometimes the matter between winning and losing. Yeah, it does often come down to the kickoffs and, 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 and Scrub Killer in his many, many series has made that point ad nauseum about how important the kickoffs are. And there we go, Shameless getting the better of it, washed is going to go for boost but shameless will have possession and if he had been on target he was getting goal number four but he still has control and possession after a demo okay yeah, watch sh shameless seem to be calming down here into uh, a little bit more of a controlled style you know you feel like once you've got a couple of goals up even in 1v1s you know it's smart oh and he just just misses that high in the corner you know, oh. an opportunity for washed here to capitalize the spawn's going to be important here, and Shameless lucky to spawn on the same side as the ball, but it's oh, not going to be Oh, but it enough. doesn't work out for him. But Wash takes one back. Yeah, it was a good spawn, but he, he was caught in two minds. He, he probably immediately wanted to go back to goal, but chose to go for, go for the ball, which I think just about everybody would do, and realized very quickly it was the wrong move, but didn't really have the time or space to get well positioned in defense. Yeah, and that's a tough angle from the spawn position when you've got somebody threatening out of the corner. It's tough in that immediate moment when you spawn to be able to gauge whether they have an angle on the net, which I don't think Wash really did. But, you know, in that second to a second and a half, have to make that determination. It's very tough to get the call right every time. Are you in favor of um, Psyonix updating the game so that a player can control what side they spawn on after a demo? I'm not, and it's because the, the way that the spawn system works now is actually really, uh, it, it's conducive to oh wow, shameless uh, that element of chance. There's so much about this that uh, is never really going to be left to chance, and so little of it that is. Um, I, I'm inclined to agree with you there. I think. I think the little bit of RNG, and, and, and you don't want a lot of RNG, but just that little bit, it adds, it adds an interesting dynamic to the whole thing. And so both with, so I'm in favor of the random spawn. And then also, I know that there have been some pros who've kind of are in favor of, of there being less debris on a demo. It's like, you know, like now if you, if you go, ro go through a demo, there's so much smoke, you don't quite know where the ball is. And I, and I also, I'm in favor of keeping that in place. I am too. I've actually, myself, uh, used that to my advantage at times, uh, particularly on an offensive push where you get caught up field and you've got a second man that's got good, good control of the ball. Um, even just going to be demoed or trying to demo something, as long as the demo happens, you kind of create that blank spot in the field where the defense loses sight of the ball for just that moment. It could be really well, it could be a really good mm. tactic to use when you understand when and where to employ it. All right, I agree with you. But in the meantime, Shameless has quietly taken control here. He's kind of running rings around washed at the moment in terms of uh, letting, him, letting him have shots from positions which al will allow him to get control of the ball again and it's worked very very well although he does miss time one there but by and large he's done very well he's going to concede one here but shameless having a good game so far yeah you really get the sense that the kickoffs are the differential here once we get into open field play uh, these guys are about as evenly matched as i've ever seen a 1v1 um it'd be interesting to see what uh wash is going to do on this kickoff here to kind of deal with Shameless just seems to have a, a kickoff dialed in where here again, after the kickoff, he ends up with possession. Uh, and that's a really tough thing to combat when you can't get possession of the ball 
Oh, until you get into a circumstance like this, this should be an easy goal for Washington. Oh, and he's down, pulls it within one. Well, there you go. So uh, I completely jinx Shameless, saying about how how good his game was. He was in control, but now it's down to one goal with a minute left, and suddenly not so comfortable for Shameless. Washed fighting his way back into this game. Yeah, and over the last few kickoffs, you've really seen Wash. Seems like he's come up with a strategy to at least make the kickoffs a little more neutral, um, where he's not really giving away possession immediately. Mm. What a save from Wash there. He's got 48 seconds to try to tie this up here. Um, yeah. He's doing a really, really good job of making the kickoffs a little bit more even. Oh, so unfortunate that just came off the post and didn't bounce in the net. Oh, this is nervy. Oh, Wash couldn't bring it back on the angle. Shameless has made a mistake. Wash is going to punish him and punish him hard. Leveled up with 26 seconds to go. Yeah, well, Wash took the boost away from him there. Shameless is obviously low on boost. And, well, you hate to see it, but it's just we all do it. When you're out of boost and you don't uh, have that resource available to you, you get panicky, and that's exactly what we saw. It ties it up at five. I never panic when I'm low on boost. I'm calm and in control at all times, which is why I'm still a diamond one in one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not for everyone. You know, oh, wow. I think Wash is going to take it here. This is amazing. So, what a turnaround from Wash. He yeah. shameless had this game. I mean, I... It, he was so in control. He was three goals up and controlling the pace, not letting Washed get any control of the ball. And suddenly, somehow, Washed has completely wrenched this game back and probably going to take game three for a two to one game lead as we head into game four. Smart to just let it fall. Yep. You know, Com we've talked about it so many times where it, the difference between the winners and the losers when you get to this part of this, the series or the season. It seems like they're just people who just understand what they've got to do to get the win when the, when the, the chips are down, you know? And uh, Wash definitely showing about well, six of seven uh, to Shameless's five of eight in terms of shots and goals. Uh, that's certainly the right way to go about it. Uh, you make sure every one of those shots you're taking, uh, as many of them as you can, are going to the back of the net. It's really tough uh, if the other guy isn't doing the same thing. You're the only two people shooting on the field. Um, you know, and if you're the one with the higher uh, shot percentage, you're going to win the games. Well, it is now Shameless that has got to figure out how to come. Hey, he took, he took game one, but two games in a row from Washed and in a strong position and the momentum sits with him. So the work from Shameless, but if he can replicate what he did for the first three and a half minutes of game one and keep that going for the rest of the game... Uh, he'll he'll win it. Uh, he was doing he was doing incredibly well, and somehow let washed right back into the game. Well, I think what's happening here is that Wash is just anticipating forfeiting the possession after the kickoff, and he's just trying to minimize the exposure on his own net, and then waiting for Shameless to get into a situation where he's low on resources. He's probably going to leave his boost alone um, and let Shameless pick it up. And this will bring us back pretty even. Oh, this is nervy. Wow, Shameless does just enough to smash it against the post and get the clear or at least a bit of breathing space. Wash is going to put this high and over. Oh, and his touch is going to let him down. What can Shameless do with this? Oh, Wash has made a mistake, but so is Shameless, who hasn't punished Wash, and he may get punished himself for it. This is very tense and nervy. Wash pumps it over off the backboard. Try to hold and scrambly both in attack and defense. Wash gets the boost. Shameless without boost has got to somehow get a clear on the shot. And Wash is just controlling the boost right now. And and we see the, the consequence of it there where the ball was left open and Shameless couldn't rush in and punish. But he is in possession now. If he can do, if he can pick up this boost, turn around, he's got a net to shoot at. He's popped it up. Washed is under pressure. Shameless gets there and gets the goal. Yeah, this is a very, very tight angle. Uh, very little bit of 
uh, real estate left above Wash Snows and below the crossbar there for Shameless to squeeze into. But he manages to pull it off, and it's fun to see these guys play the boost game on either end of the field, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, a pretty all-in all in play there from Shameless. It was kind of, if it, if it goes right, he's scoring. If he misses, he's in massive trouble. Similar to that, but, oh, he gets away with it there. Kind of committing yeah, there it's... right in front of the net, but he's okay for now and holds on to his razor-thin lead for the moment. Yeah, both players doing a good job to kind of get set up in the opponent's end start controlling the boost, start making uh, moves, uh, you know, either, uh, both of them kind of opting for these high uh, popped up balls where they can get the top shelf over a defender who, you know, you would assume at this point, Shameless is probably pretty low on boost here. Yeah. And that's, and that's just good, smart 1v1 strategy. No, it's, it was very well read and it's infuriating because the ball is going so slowly you can see it. You know you could you could get to it, but it's just out of reach. You don't have the boost. Very nicely done from Washed, and now Washed with a great angle to get the second goal and take the lead. He read that so well. Oh, and shameless couldn't get it. Uh, it landed up hitting his roof. He wanted to hit it with his hood and push it away, but just missing that. A game of pixels, and Washed pouncing on it. Yeah, and Washed also still doing a great job of... Oh. oh, what a save from Shameless. Well done. Washed doing a good job on kickoffs, I was going to say. He's definitely getting oh. the, the 50s. <laughs> and Shameless going to go ahead and uh, solid give himself a little bit of certainty here oh, by that just demo, uh, eliminating that de the defender. <laughs> but that demo and, was so uh, well done. Washed rushing back to net. And <laughs> Shameless just saw him hit the brakes for a fraction to get the timing right, smacked him off the field and walked it in. We're two goals apiece. All right, but here we are again. Shameless with that better kickoff and it pays oh. off. Yeah, and you start, they're starting to mix it up a little bit too. I don't know if you're paying attention or how close you're paying attention to it, but one of the things that um, Wash has been doing is delaying kickoffs here. Shameless a little quicker to the ball on kickoffs sometimes, but as we saw just there, Shameless reading the delay. Again, both of them delaying here. Um, yes. And Shameless getting the better of it. So Shameless obviously put in the time and the effort on kickoffs to have a few different ways of going about that particular aspect of the game. Well, it stood him in good stead and kept him in at every, at every step here. But he is behind in games. But ahead here. And now Washed is going to have plenty time to just put that away and level it up to 3 all. Yeah, and you know, you don't see it as much in 1v1s as, you know, I I think the demo in the 1v1, when it's done correctly, the two plays that we just saw back to back, it's really a very effective tactic. You don't see it as much, I don't feel, in ones as I'd like to see it. And Wash finally getting the better half of the kickoff here, but unable to gather it up as he had to go back to the midfield to collect boost. going to gather it again, get the midfield boost, and go for one more shot here. Oh. Really tough to make those type of aerial plays, though, when you've got a defender really just sitting and waiting. Uh, that's one of the reasons why those kind of plays are so ineffective in 1v1. Is because, oh, no. Oh, and Shameless just not able to get a handle on this. Yeah, a lot of the reason why it's ineffective is because you don't have any element, any element of surprise. You know, the defender's not looking at anything but you on the ball entirety of the game so try to get those plays where you're popping the ball up even uh, even the ground to air dribbles are a lot more difficult because you you've either got to do them in time so that they're not being telegraphed to your opponent oh great example there while well, uh, these the players kind of popping up yeah these players this game they're so neck and neck hot zen it's one goes up the other one the other one equalizes it's uh, they're chasing each other to the finish line here now shameless now back to getting the better of the kickoff gathering that boost putting wash in a position where he's got to clear this ball out um shameless opts not to go for the midfield boost instead goes for a touch here wash waits it out uh, this ball is bouncing very nervy in front oh. of the net. oh there we go 
we always refer to that as the backflip life. So, unfortunately, <laughs> the backflip life gets washed here. Um, and Shameless goes up by one. One yeah, minute left to go. You know, Shameless is going to tie this up here if he wants to sort of stay in contention. Well, he's he's well positioned to do that. Also, a little bit of a delay on the kickoff, but he reads it. He is definitely reading it better to the point you've made several times. And it gives him control. Goes back for the boost, and he does relinquish possession, which might not have been a good move because Bit Washed is going to get the dunk. And again, as we have seen time and time again in this game, it's going to be leveled up. Yeah, and again, that's that same play where as a defender, you really, there's nothing you could do uh, to absorb that ball and keep that dunk from happening. Smart play by Washed. Uh, so a lot of times in 1v1s, you just want to put a low, slow rolling ball at, your, at the defender because they don't have much opportunity to do anything else. Seamus should have this here. No, oh. he's going to miss the open net. No, okay. he'll get the rebound. <laughs> My goodness. It was like, really? Really? But he doesn't. He makes sure of it. Gets it in. But Washed was just second, a half a millimeter away from getting the bump, but doesn't. And he is again behind. You can see who comes out on top. Oh, Shameless with an uncharacteristic miss on the kickoff there. Put himself in a bad spot. Oh, no, but Washed oh, just Oh, yeah. Uh, really left him wide open. Now, maybe he's just counting it. He's, oh. he's counting on him not being able to hit open nets. And this is a good strategy. <laughs> I like that. I think I think he was I think he was very surprised by what happened at the kickoff that he he wasn't ready to take advantage of it. Well, Wash will probably do well to just try to get the ball on top of his car and see if he can get down the field. It doesn't happen, and they tie it up at two piece. Two games all, as we have seen throughout the series tonight no team is winning it's not been one-way traffic for any team in any series tonight every team has had to fight 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 for dominance absolutely and you know what's really been amazing and, and fun to watch in this is the kickoff battle um and honestly you can see the other thing is the shot differential again shameless uh six of eight to Washed 5 of 11. Um, and again, like as we pointed out in previous games, that can often be, that shot percentage can often be the difference uh, between winning and losing. All right, Let's Eric. See how Washed responds. Eric Schroeder in chat backing Shameless. Let's see how it works out. An all important one here. Game five, probably the most important in the game of seven, uh, the best of seven scenario. Other, other than, other than the game that wins you the series, of course. Oh, what? Uh, really risky, oh. uh, risky play on Shameless's part to control, but he gets it to pay off. He gets Wash to overcommit. Wash doesn't sign the back of the net, and Shameless goes up 1-0. Game five. Well, it only pays off because Shameless was off target. It was the right move. And a few millimeters the other way, that was a goal for Wash, but it is Shameless who goes up early in game five. Yeah, now Shameless delaying on the kickoff uh, and still coming out the better for it. This ball should be right back to him in possession. Like oh Shameless my maybe, word! Uh, <clears throat> the the placement on this was amazing. Play, oh, uh, sorry, Hudson. Yeah, that's fine. I was, I was just, just going to say he. It seems as though he's decided to switch his game up a little bit and kind of play from a distance. Uh, two shots in a row that were really a power shots off the ground from a distance rather than trying to... And also playing this delayed, he switched it up on Washington where he's now the one delaying the kickoff. And I think that's going to be frustrating for Wash to try to figure out what to do. Uh, more than likely, Shameless is just going to be delaying kickoffs until he gets washed kind of used to that being what's happening and then he'll he'll go back to the speed flip and beat him uh to the ball keep doing the thing until it doesn't work oh my word shameless missing there but watch can he get the half flip he half he half gets the half flip but doesn't put him in a position to take advantage now shameless has control with the carry can't get it over wash but he does get the demo he's in control and he will get the goal. Oh, no, he won't. He's beaten it and put it wide onto the post. 
Shameless certainly seems like he's found another gear here. Uh, it's a little bit quicker than in the first four games. Um, feels like he's he's really ready to try to put this away. Uh, been most of the pressure um, for Shameless in this game so far. Wash, I don't think, has put uh, a shot on net yet. Yeah, and Shameless at the same time controlling the boost con and, and therefore controlling the pace of the game. But we did see this from him in game three where it looked like he was all over it. And then suddenly, in the last minute and a half, Washed got right back into it, figured it out, and stole that game. It kind of picked his pocket. So Shameless is going to want to be cautious of that. He's, he's in front, he's in charge, and he's pretty much controlling how this game goes now. Oh, and he does beautifully. And to your point, a long-distance shot finds its mark. Three goals to nothing. Yeah, and really the mark of, of a of a tenured 1v1 player he's mixing it up he's mixing up the kickoffs he's making up mixing up how he's uh attacking offensively uh what's what he's really trying to get wash to do is to commit to challenges um out into the to the midfield away from his net <clears throat> so that then uh he'll have an opportunity uh if he can get an errant touch from wash i don't know how he wasn't able to get back to that wash kind of giving a little bit of his own medicine here yeah, a long distance shot paying off for Washed as well and I think getting a bit fed up of trying to <laughs> trying to get enough boost to control the close game takes the long distance shot and Washed begins his comeback in game five. Yeah, Shameless still going with the delayed kickoffs here. So it'll be interesting to see how long he keeps that up before he decides to switch back. Uh, go for the speed flip here. See if he doesn't go for another bounce. Yeah, it's still going for the shots from further out in field, opting instead of uh, trying to play the close game and, and win 50s to just take the shots from out in the field, try to catch Wash in a position where he can just get the ball over his head, uh, be it a flick, be it a bounce dribble, whatever. Nice bump from Wash there to try to get control back here, but Shameless immediately back on the ball. Long shot and here Wash. from Wash. Shameless will get back in time and read it out and maintains possession. And he's had most of the possession. Well, I misspoke there. He had pushed it a little too far. Allowed Wash to get it from close quarter. Wash has a shot, but the block is on from Shameless. And now another long distance shot from Shameless is going to be saved on the goal line by Wash. But he's under pressure, having used a lot of boost for that save. And it works out very well. The age-old tactic, make your opponent work in net, and eventually they run out of the boost to defend effectively. And there we go. Re-established three-goal lead for Shameless, and very little time left here. A minute and a half to go. Well, again, in 1v1s, you know, that's an eternity. We've seen, <clears throat> we've seen such a lead evaporate in, you know, a third of the time. It's definitely possible but really interesting to me to see how shameless has mixed up his play style here uh and also interesting to see how washed has just gone right along with it uh and both of these players taking shots from further out in the field uh not playing the control game as much not looking to dribble as much oh. taking more of those bounce dribbles and and longer shots from out in the field Be interesting to see which of them tries to switch up the game and go back to a more controlled slow play style um, especially with the clock running low here, here, Wash is going to have to do something to try to turn this around. Well, we've seen a pretty frenetic passage of play. <clears throat> Washed, I think, by my count, made four attempts of uh, attempts to bump or demo Shameless and missed all of them. I think he's gotten he's gotten very frustrated with how this game has gone and the fact that he hasn't been able, he's just not been able to control any part of it. All his touches have been sort of desperate touches in defense, trying to get a clear, trying to get something going. But Shameless has been there and controlling it. And it's, and it's, uh, I think the frustration has be started to tell on watched game as he's tried to come back into it and been unable to. And that's allowed Shameless even more opportunity to be more offensive and take more goals. Yeah, well, this change of play style from Shameless, what it's doing is it's causing Wash to have to make a tougher decision about challenging a ball. In other words, uh, whereas before he could kind of count on Shameless to sort of gather the ball up, uh, get his resources together, you know, take the ball up on his car and uh, make that attack. By shooting these balls from further out in the field, 
Now Wash oh. has got to make the decision. Uh, let's see if he can save this. He does. <laughs> but he's got to make that decision on whether or not to challenge. And that's a really tough position to be in, particularly if you start getting low on resources, low on boost. Um, and it's paid off for Shameless here. Um, Wash able to get a couple of goals using that same tactic. But of course, whenever you're using someone's own tactics against them, uh, probably not the smartest way to go about it. Uh, as they're going to be very aware of what you're trying to do since that's what they're trying to do to you, you know? Yeah, well, it has worked out for Shameless. Shameless is now with the massive advantage. He's on series point, final point, championship point. If he wins the next game, he will be the champion for this IGL circuit. Now, for as much as we've spoken about how... <clears throat> how games best of sevens are not one in a sweep. We have not tonight gone to champions field. So the furthest we've gone is a game six on wasteland, which we're about to see mm -hmm. a game, but can washed find a way to counter shameless and his style of play right now to land us on champions field for the final time. You know, for the, it's gonna for the first time. Odd. But if I'm washed right now, uh, I, I'm going to go back to where I was in game one and you know try to start doing some of that more mechanical type play. Uh, maybe go ahead and get up on the walls. Just do something different because if he doesn't, Shameless is definitely waiting. Uh, and here he's mixing up, trying to do a, play, a slow play style and he's unable to gather the boost. So Shameless is going to be in an advantageous position here again. But uh, if I'm washed, I'm going to try to try to be doing everything I haven't done for the last four games that I did first game. Um, and more than anything, just he's got to be more accurate with his shots. Uh, Shameless just much more accurate with oh. with his goals, as we see and here. We, we see, and I see a beautiful example of that illustrated. <laughs> just taking his time to control it, by which time Shameless had edged up a little too close and Shameless popping it right over him. Yeah, and he's still delaying his kickoffs ever so slightly. You notice what the, the point of this is just to allow the ball to bounce into Wash's half while Wash is forced to, to collect resources. And then you just immediately take control. Now, Wash is smart to get the boost there, but it's not going to keep Shameless from getting the angle there. And it really does start to feel like Shameless may be running away with this. Yeah. <clears throat> and and coming back to the, the mentality side of it that we've spoken about at some length, in the last series, uh, I did get the feeling that Wash got very was getting quite irritated last game that he couldn't he couldn't play his game he he couldn't make Shameless uh, sort of bend to his will and there we see with with a, a kind of weird out of the play reckless demo I think he's frustrated and and that's not a good place to be. Yeah, not and a slow. Sort of rolling, uh, what a great job from Shameless on the defense here with no boost. Uh, still with no boost. It'll be interesting to see. And he manages to get the clear. He gets this midfield. Oh, wow. Wash leaves the midfield boost from that is not advisable whatsoever. <clears throat> and Shameless. Yeah, the other thing, too, is Shameless definitely trying to eat time off the clock with these blooming balls. <clears throat> He's done very well. <clears throat> For fairly long spells in a number of games, Shameless, in he does incredibly well when he's looking to control the game. When when he's when he's not necessarily looking to score, oh, there he was just in such a pickle and awkward position, where he's not necessarily looking to score, but just keep the ball away from Wash. And if he keeps that up, the more he keeps it up, the more frustrated Wash is going to get. But that's going to give Wash a bit of confidence to bring it within one goal. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see again delaying the kickoff. This time, not going well for him. Uh, so he's going to have to get his boost to try to gather control, keep it away from Wash. You wonder why Wash didn't try to dive in on that sooner. Um, maybe he thinks he's going to have a better chance of uh, beating him back here, but shameless smart to just kind of put this in the corner. You know, one of the, the real tricks in 1v1 is the circumstance that Shameless finds himself in now when you're low boost. 
you just gotta kind of stay low, make sure you're in the play, make sure you can get a 50. Mm. Yeah, and he man managed to push upfield offensively at this point, up until that point, with no boost. Um, and that's a huge differentiator uh, if you're able to not panic, know that you've got a couple of dodges will get you supersonic. You can grab the midfield boost while you're going upfield and pushing. Um, Shameless has certainly demonstrated uh, that he's not concerned with how much boost he's got. Again, that, that choice on Wash's part there uh, to not go for ball over boost. Yes. And he's kind of paying for it now. I do know, though, from seeing Washed, is that if he can figure out a way to counter Shameless, just just for a uh, for long enough, uh, if, if he can get a sense that he's back in this game, he's going to be very dangerous. But until he figures that out, he is chasing this game. And now a three-goal differential. And, and, and this is... This is where we see the effect of a best of seven. It's a long series. And, and over the course of six games, as we're seeing now, often you see one player just starting to get worn down. And I think, I think Washed is feeling a little weary just by the way, the way it's going, how he's playing. It's a war of attrition and Shameless is winning that battle. Yeah, well, I've got the sense, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the last game, it's almost as if Shameless was like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and shift into this next higher gear. Uh, because he's just been quicker to the ball. He's been quicker with decision making, uh, just all around quicker than he was in the in the previous four games. Um, it's almost as though like he just finally said to himself, all right, well, uh, all the chips are down now. Let's go ahead and uh, shift into high gear and finish this off. All right, well, he is in charge. A minute and a half remains. Four goals for Wash to find, and the momentum is not in his favor. And as it stands now, you you don't see a way for him to come back into this. But all it takes is one or two moments for it to swing. Rocket League swings on a dime. We see it happening all the time. Uh, uh, but it is, it's rare for someone in this position to go on and lose. But let's see how it plays out. He does his first job, which is to not concede again, but time is running low. He has to respond pretty much right now. He's got, oh, but he gets bumped. That was possibly an opportunity. Oh my word, Shameless is being brutal. He's being savage. He's basically saying, yeah, I'm not letting you back into this game at all. He certainly is. Wow, as I counted five bumps there along the wall. <clears throat> I would say the one area Shameless might want to look at in his gameplay, he seems to have trouble uh, with balls that are kind of bounced over his head right in front of the net. He keeps hitting the crossbar with them. Other than that, though, he really has played a brilliant game. Uh, the way he was able to switch up his kickoffs, um, he's still, even in this game, he's not looking to take control as much. He's looking for these bounce shots um, anytime, and he's doing a really good job not so much there, but he's doing a good job of timing when Wash is going to be going up for a ball mm. um, and just being able to get there a beat before. Of course, there he didn't, but uh, that's the first time Wash has beat him to a 50 uh, and was able to make something come of it. 12 seconds, though, it's going to be a tall order to make up a three-goal differential here. Yeah, I don't think it's a possible order, Hot Zen. I think Shameless is going to put a lock on this. He allowed it to go to two games all after that. He's pretty much controlled the play since then. He's figured out how to push Wash back. And he does it magnificently. And TPGG Shameless is the Spring Circuit champion in this Tier 4 1v1 tournament. And to a point you made earlier, I, do, I mean, these are two very good players. They both had exceptional records uh, coming into this game. And they do look like they do look like the players, the best players in this league. So big up to them both. I don't know if Shameless is trying to. All right. Well, Congrats here he to my comes. Opponents he... And I'd like to say a message. Okay. Congrats to my opponents, and then I'd like to say a message just to repeat that. Okay. Let's hope it's a clean one. Yeah. Let's see. Put the. Uh... Put your finger on the three-second delay button. <laughs> Remember those? We got those on television for a long oh, time. Yeah. Seven-second delay. 
you're you're talking about the good old days, Hotzid. I know, I know. There's probably half the people in your chat don't have any idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. Oh, but he took too long now. And now... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he took too long. Okay, well, shameless, put it into Discord and I will broadcast a message for you. But we are going to go straight to the next game. And I think, Hot Zen, you, you're a bit pressed for time now. Are you sticking around or yeah, are you going to go? I, I won't be able to start this because... Uh, no problem. The off chance it doesn't finish on time. and I've got to be somewhere right at... Right at uh, but I think 4.30 my time is only a half hour, so probably not enough time to stick with you. But thank you so much, yeah, no as always, for having me. Looking forward to uh, developing our casting for next circuit. The next circuit and, is uh, going to be amazing, and more to come on that. <clears throat> but we're going to be taking it to the next level. And as always, thank yeah, you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, Artsen. It's always a pleasure having you, and, and, and look forward to us taking this further. So peace out, brother. All right. Peace out, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Yeah, but uh, we're going to build all of that into next season, Eric. I'll talk a little bit more at the end of the night on what, what I'm planning for next season, but we're going to make it. It's going to be amazing next season. Guys, I need to start the next series almost immediately, but I have to desperately go and pee. So I'm going to take a two-minute break and go and take care, of, take care of that. I will be back in just a couple of minutes.
Thank you, Eric. I said all sorts of amazing things with my mic on mute. Hey, why not? Why not? I was basically just reading out uh, Shameless's message. It's a great message. Thank you for that, Shameless. You played a superb game. Well done. I like how you went about your business and good stuff. I hope we see you back next season. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, glad you can hear me now. <laughs> hey, Kira H, just subscribe. Yay! Thank you very much. Well, I've, I, I have the cam on between games. I turn it off during the game. Because that way you can focus on the actual game and not be distracted by my ridiculously fabulous beard the whole way through the game. All right, so. An absolute pleasure. I've, I've been thrilled to be part of your journey, Shameless, and I look forward to next season, mate. And the casting next season is going to be next level. But more on that in time to come. Right now, we need to get into this game. We're already late. This is a third place playoff from one of my favorite teams. Oldies but gold. Who are playing for third place. Up against Team Frantic. And it is a tier two, three versus three and it is bound to be epic. I'm really looking forward to it. In the quarterfinals, oldies but gold reversed swept to move into the semifinals, and they came, it went to game seven overtime in the semifinals. They almost reverse swept for the second time in a row. It was epic, but it was not to be, and they find themselves here in the third place playoff but no doubt it is not going to be any less epic. So without further ado, let's get the lobby set up and let's get this going. Um... <clears throat> Oh, it's with a C. It's with a C. Frantic with a C, the proper way. All right, lobby is up. Um, all right, I've let the teams know. Let's go, Commandos. It's howling time. Time for some epic tier two Rocket League. Respect my elders. I'm one of your elders. All right, it looks like we got the oldies army in the chat. You love to see it. You love to see it. So, Team Frantic comprise a 28-year-old, a 15-year-old, and a 16-year-old. So it is the youngsters against the oldsters. Easy, Christina. Easy, easy, easy. I need it. There's got to be a better emoji than that. All right. So we have two thirds of the oldies in the lobby. No, we have all of them. I beg your pardon. We've got Echo, Hank, and Raz. So we're just waiting on the frantics. It is quite late. I hope the youngsters are still awake. Whoa! Hampus! 
Ulleride. Ulleride. Let's just call you Hampus. Thank you for subscribing. Older is. The older is. Lots of support in the chat. Love it. Love it. All right, we're having a, apparently a problem with cross-platform play, so we're just sorting that out, and we'll get the teams in. All right, Dragetta, who's been pretty good with the predictions, is predicting a 4-2 series win for the Oldies, or the Goldies. That's a good short name. Oh, there we go, Eric. Where's the beard, man? Where's the beard? Brad Kalinsky, another support for the oldies. I love it. Ooh, ouch, Eric. <laughs> oh, Sabina. Just subscribe. Obviously related to hampers. It's fabulous to see. <clears throat> Sorry, I called him hampers. I meant to say hampers. I mean, I can check my I'll, I can check my settings. Cro cross platform. Where is cross platform? Oh, I don't think I can see it here. I can only see it from outside the game. So what happened? The oldies all left. And now the other team's making their way in. Oh, okay, here they come. We just need... Whoa! We have a full roster of two teams. We can get this underway. All right, I think we can go. All right, let's do it. Game one, best of seven, third place playoff. Tier 2. Uh, this is going to be quite a shift from the uh, the 1v1 play. Suddenly there's going to be a lot of cars on the field. And they're off. Oh, tie immediately making a statement. Bang off kickoff. Six seconds in. Great read off the corner. Raz was way behind that and gets punished one nothing to team frantic oh smashing the kickoff here are frantic almost leading to a second goal hank puts it down nicely for elfie and the first 20 seconds of this game the oldies have been up against it Hank, oh, he doesn't get the intercept. But Echo, the Dolphin, does get there. Raz is going to put it high off the back wall. Can anybody pick up the follow? Ty intercepts. Hank with the clear away from the net. Nicely done. Elniar. Elniamer. 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 Oh, a save. Well, all the saves having to be done by the oldies, but they're doing okay. They're only one goal behind. And as long as they keep it that way, they're going to be in it.
Okay, I'm inclined to agree with you. Ones, there's lots you have to talk about. A lot of space to fill in here. In threes, it's quite frantic. It's like there's something happening all the time. Echo looking for the pass. Ties clear is not good, but Elfie will clean up. Oh, great opportunity here. Is this pinched in? Indeed it has through Raz. Elfie trying to clear it away. Ty goes up. Raz intercepts. And he'll probably be surprised himself that it went in. But he will take it all day, every day. One all. And look at this game. Win-loss record between these two teams. Both have won six and lost only three. So they are very closely matched. So will we see our first champions field game seven of the night in four series the furthest we've gone up till now has been game six on wasteland oh raz is bullied off the ball but hank's gonna pick it up oh no he's not he's gonna whiff it but fortunately echo is there to pick it up and boom it right over into the blue corner elfie's touch is heavy echo pops it up but Hank's not close enough to take advantage. More defensive work here. Alfie's going to bring it round the corner. It's in front of the net. Can he get another touch? Echo! Oh, my word. That was a nervy moment. But it is still one apiece. And we're about to hit half time. Hank looking to control it. Pops it up and then misses the boost. Has to circle back for the boost. But they're doing okay. El Niaba with the shot. Raz with the save. And the number of times he does that where he will save while looking incredibly awkward is amazing. But he's figured out a way to get in front of the ball on the goal line and does it well now. He has a shot. El Niaba with a backward save of his own. Raz looking to bring it back. Cleared away by Ty. Popped up. Who gets there first? Echo does. Ty. Controlling. Past one. Echo with the intercept. But it's going to fall for Elfie. Oh no. Miscommunication between Elfie and Elniar is going to give an opportunity to the oldies. Echo. Passing it in front. Raz coming for the shot. He shoots. Is it enough? Oh. But somewhere between the crossbar and the player. It's saved. And kept out and still won a piece. Oh, ho, ho. the demo opens up a scoring lane, but Hank will get there and boom it up forward. Elfie, a defensive mistake. Raz almost punishes, but it squeezes between the upright and the crossbar. Frenetic stuff, but the pressure coming from the oldies right now. They're building it, and the scramble to clear is not going well for them. Oh, Hank and Echo get in each other's way. This is going to put a release valve on all that pressure that had been built up and present an opportunity. But Echo clears, and here come the oldies in numbers. Hank with a shot opportunity, and he puts it away. 20 seconds on the clock. The oldies, but goals one to threes are up. Two goals to one. Now they just got to hang on. Can they do it? The team frantic are going to be frantically pressing forward, looking for an opportunity. A miscommunication in attack is going to allow Hank to give the long booming clear and eat up valuable seconds on the clock. That will give it time. It rolls. Hank just leaves it alone. They can't keep it up. Oldies but gold. Going against recent form, win game one. This has not been their way in recent times. Now, looking at Elfie's ping, that's a South African's ping. Elfie, are you South African? Oh. 
Urban Central now for game two. Game two, oldies with the early advantage, but this is a best of seven. It's a long road, possibly and winding. They're off. Elnia into the orange corner. Echo does well, just keeps it close to him, controlling it. Oh, but he's pressured by Ty. Pressured off the ball, to be fair. Elnia's up here. Shoots! Raz can't get the save. And Team Frantic take the early lead. Elnia up, brings it down. I think. I think Raz might have been faked a little bit by Henk in front of him, but either way, can't get to it in time. Perhaps just the old reflexes not able to get to it. They are behind. Team Frantic in front here in game two on Urban Central. Oh, nice work by Elniov. He's going to put the oldies under pressure again. Elfie shoots down and right, almost sneaks it past. The oldies survive, but for how long? Hank clears off the gold line. Gold line, goal line. Team Frantic looking a lot more determined in this game, spending more time in attack, building pressure of their own, which was missing for large parts of the last game. And it is the oldies, but goals one, two, three. Who are having to put in the defensive work. Ty can't put it down in front of the net. But Elniar's going to have a go. Raz, how far can he get this clear? Dispossessed on the ceiling by Elfie. Echo to the rescue. Looking a lot more threatening are the Team Frantic. The, had a number of moments of miscommunication in the last game and not sure if they spoke to each other about that to get that worked out but it certainly looks better coordinated here in game two but here come the oldies echo looking to bring it in front but tie with the easy clear echo gonna make things awkward elfie's up raz is up elfie gets there first elnia looking for the delicate touch backwards can't make it hank now Gets it past one. Can he make something else happen? Passes it back to Raz. Deliberately or not, I'm not entirely sure, but it worked out. Here comes Echo. His shot goes wide into the corner. Hey, Hank got an open net for a second, but an awkward angle. So he looks to just bring it round. Raz bring it into the middle with the physical play. The demo doesn't work out for now. Echo missing on the wall. Oh, another demo in front of the net. Dolphin is up. Echo shoots and scores. Reads it off the backboard. Things are leveled up. Frantic unable to clear. Nice read from Echo. Unsavable. Top right corner. What a piece. Oh. It's loose, loose and grounded on the midway line. LDR is up. <clears throat> Echo with a bit of a spring in his step after that goal. He's going to have to defend for the start. And he's done this a few times where he's, he's quite calm in defense, looks to pick up the ball and control it out. But then funnily enough, by the time he hits the midway line, that is when he panics. And he will just look to shoot it away from himself in an uncontrolled fashion. Here come Frantic, looking to re-establish their lead. Oh, the demo on Hank, the bump on Hank, almost works out. A whiff here from Elfie, but possession for Team Frantic. Indeed they are, Andrew, old and coordinated, which is not always the case, as I'm sure you well know. Alfie. Mm. 
very tight this game too. Nothing separates these teams. Only a minute separates them from a possible overtime. Raz is going to miss his follow-up, but Echo will complete the clear. They're still under pressure. Hank is dunked by Alfie into the middle. Ty bringing it around the corner in front of the net. The miss by Echo, the clear by Hank. They've had a few periods of sustained pressure, the oldies, but they've weathered it well so far. Team Frantic looking for a way through. They want to level things up after game two. Low 50. This is dangerous. This is awkward. Tie with the shot. It's off the backboard. No one there to follow it up. Echo completes the clear. The 50 goes the way of the oldies. Thai though with the clear. And we are rolling our way down to overtime. Unless LDR can get his shot on. And between Raz and I think Hank, they managed to squeeze it away. And we do find ourselves in a game two. Overtime! The golden goal territory. Awkward for Frantic, but they do get it away. And now they're moving forward in some numbers. Hank and Echo trying hard not to get in each other's way. Hank will get it over Ty. But Elfie will be there. The shot is down. It's down. Is anyone? Can anyone get there? Echo pops it up, sort of. It's now going to be back in the possession of Frantic. It's two on two. Raz must get this touch, and he does. Hank wins an awkward 50. It's pretty nervy. Neither, nobody wants to make a mistake here. And sometimes that shows the whiff from Raz, but Raz, but the booming shot forward. Oh, this is so awkward. Surely, yes, Hank will get the winning goal. 2-1 to the oldies, but goal 1-3s. to threes. They have a two-game advantage, and I'm not sure how they're going to respond to this. They've done very well going behind early. Now they're ahead early, winning the first two games. How do they handle the position of being two goals, two games in front? Well, we are going to find out in it. In it. We have not, there are two things we have not seen tonight. We have not seen a sweep and we have not seen a game seven on Champions Field. So far, both of those options remain a possibility. We could see a sweep, but we could also still see a game seven thriller. Dragetta, the only one to venture in a prediction, he reckons 4-2 to the Goldies, which means the Goldies, which means this will end on Wasteland Night. But it remains to be seen how it pans out. No early goal here in Game 3 in the Forbidden Temple. The Dolphin, though, looking to change that. The pass, Raz, come flying in, but Elfie got in the way of it. And now an opportunity for Team Frantic, who don't want to be in the position of having to reverse sweep. That is a to use a South Africanism, a cuck position to be in, having to reverse sweep. The shot now from Elniar, cut out by Raz. Ty is up, he misses, it's down in front, it's dangerous, it's awkward. Hank whiffs, and Elniar almost has an open net to shoot at, he may still do. Ty, oh, I can't see through the smoke, he's put it wide. Frantic now. Haven't looked as menacing as they would like to have when they come forward. They, they, they've done well to apply pressure for sustained periods, but not found a way through. And Echo is going to put the oldies in front in game three. Elfie, not a great touch away. It did keep it away from the net, but laid it down for Echo, who made no mistake. The oldies. In front in this game and two games to nothing up.
The game in a little bit of limbo, but with the Goldies in front. Alfie, this is dangerous. Bit of a team pinch gets a half, half, a half clear. But now the demo, opening an opportunity. Henk is going to put it just on the post. Echo, to up for the sidewall, reads the bounce, looking to pass it in front. Henk! Cleared away by Elniar. The net's open. Echo is back. Can he get the read? He doesn't need to. Hank now. He's got one to beat. Ty gets there first. Good stuff from the oldies. They've done well to get themselves where they are, but it is only a one goal game. The Frantics know that. Their one goal levels it up, and then they can push to take a lead. Nice work from Heng to get the clear out. Alfie puts it down for Elniar. Elniar, I think, I'm not sure if he wanted to put it there. Might have been looking for the shot on net. Doesn't get it on target, obviously. And the oldies doing remaining firm and solid in defense. Echo now gets it over one. Alfie having some awkward defensive work to do. Does well. Raz with the shot forward. Ty will control it out. He's got zero boost. He was hoping for that corner boost to spawn. It didn't. It, now it spawns. Hank didn't steal it though, which is surprising, but it doesn't need to be. Raz is going to put the oldies two goals up. Alfie, his save, pops the ball up. Echo off the backboard. Raz with the finish. The oldies are in charge as it stands now. Raz! Oh my word! Echo putting it off the side wall. Raz reading it from just before the halfway line. Squeezes it past the left hand post. A commanding three to nothing lead. A chance now for Ty to bring the Frantics back into this, but they have really... The closest game was game one, but since then the oldies have pretty much dictated the play. They've had the best of the action, and they've not figured out a way to break through the oldies who've been fantastic in their on their back half in keeping it tight and clearing it away and creating offensive pressure. Well, don't get too far ahead of yourself, Dragetta. Where do things have happened? And now, Hank! Hank is starting to flex. Raz putting it off the backboard. Hank with the superb read. Double tap. Technically, not probably a double tap, but... I like that effect, so I use it. Oh, opportunity now, Ty! Team Frantic are not done yet, but my word, this is going to be the late, late show if they make it happen here. 45 seconds. They have to score every 15 seconds to just take it to overtime. Okay, reckons 4-1. The first 15 seconds are up for Team Frantic. Time running down, massive time pressure. The pressure of the clock. And there's just not the time available. They'll keep that one out, but my word, the oldies a dominating performance an emphatic victory here in forbidden temple means that they go three wins up they have four i repeat four chances 
to take the series and become third place champions in the IGL Tier 2 3 versus 3 Europe of the Indie Gaming League Spring Circuit. And now we go game four to Utopia. Utopia Coliseum. This is game four. Are we going to see the first sweep? In fact, in the three weeks of playoffs that I have been casting matches, there has not been a single sweep. Sweeps in a best of seven are incredibly hard. Can the oldies do it? Team Frantic will be fighting hard to make sure that they do not lose this in a sweep. Hank pops it over Elniar. Ty's going to pick it up in the corner. This is dangerous for Team Frantic. Elniar does fairly well to get it over to the other side, but they're still under pressure. Elniar, good, clearing, booming shot. This is dangerous and awkward. Raz will get it as far as the side wall, but stopped by Ty. Elfie looking to pass it in around the corner. Anyone there? Hank is there for the clear. Elniar and it is frantic with the early advantage. Henk gets the clear, but Elniar reading that awkward bounce off the curve. Raz can't get back. Frantic are not done. Fair enough, Hot Zen. I'm I'm an unbiased caster with a with a tiny bit of hidden favoritism, but frantic doing well right now to send an early message can they hang on raz does he get some kind of a second touch here he doesn't cleared away by elfie what is srse andrew oh eldio's gonna get a second team frantic ho 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 sending a little message of their own thigh tide doing incredibly well to set that up nice finish from elnia Team Frantic, Frantic in it to come back. Senior Series Esports. First I've heard that name. Didn't know of such a place. Did you just make that up though? Or is that a real thing? Raz, got one to beat. Can't get it past Elnia. Nice low 50, one by him. Elfie now, looking to set something up here. Cut away by Hank. But the pressure is on from Frantic. This is their best period of play in the entire series. They're keeping it firmly locked in the oldies half. Elfie now, oh, slightly mishit on that. Could have set up a great scoring opportunity, but now they're going to have to defend. Echo looking to pass it off the back, but a miscommunication between he and Hank, and they're a little overcommitted here and need to rotate back into position. Ah. Got you, Andrew. Thank you for that. Time. Raz. Oh, awkward and nervy moment. They were standard for now. We're coming up to half time. And oh my word, Hank with the heroic goal line clear. Keeps it to just two goals and keeps oldies in it and still with a chance to take the series down in a sweep. Oh no! Hey everyone, overrunning the ball in the midfield. Raz brings it back to his own corner and will try to set something up from here. A little over two minutes remain. Echo. Ty. Where the oldies have done well is building sustained pressure against the frantic, in the frantic's half, but they've not been allowed to do that this game. Frantic have been very good at getting the ball out of their half whenever it ventures in there. Not giving the oldies the time and space they've had in the previous games. But that pressure is starting to build now. Perhaps the oldies, can they overcome the resistance of the F team Frantic? A great opportunity, but they've left themselves open. 
Ty will score three goals. And looking more and more like the Frantic are going to storm back into the series. Ooh, look at that. Titanium white 8-bit glasses. Haven't seen those. I want those. If anybody's got those, come, let's trade. Oh, a little bit of miscoordination there. Denying an opportunity to the oldies to bring, get themselves back in this. And is that going to be a fourth goal? What an outstanding redirect from Alfie. And that has just put an exclamation mark on this. Team Frantic are back. I don't think we're seeing a sweep, ladies and gentlemen. One minute remains. The oldies being pushed back. Team Frantic making sure that the oldies don't have it all their way. And this is going to give them a lot of confidence. Going into game five. Oh, ho, 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 ho. and that is going to put the kibosh on this. Team Frantic well and truly back in the series. But they're going to have to do this three more times to take the win. Ho, 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 ho. Raz does finally get one for the oldies. Probably a little late. But hey, weirder things have happened. Is this the late, late show from the oldies? All right, okay, that's an interesting piece of analysis there. You're probably not wrong. But let's see how your theory pans out. Ooh, Echo with the whiff! And now really putting it beyond the reach of the oldies in this game. Thirty seconds to go. Now we're just running out clock here. The oldies will try and do something just to give themselves a bit of momentum, a bit of confidence. But they've been well and truly beaten, well and truly pushed back in this game. And we, the Brazil will be completed at seven-one. Indeed, it is, Andrew. Seven-one. You had barely finished typing Brazil. When the Brazil came up. Oh, look at Alfie. Alfie rubbing it in there in the chat. Welcome to Brazil, boys. Well, of the two possibilities, a sweep or a Game 7 thriller... Only the Game 7 Thriller remains a possible. I'm concerned about Elfie's ping. It has been so incredibly high. But he's, he's done okay with it. But it's got to be a little frustrating for him. I'm sure he's not used to that. All right. We are going to a Game 5 on Neo Tokyo. Let's go, Commandos. It's howling time. Team Frantic with a dominating win there. Look at that. Nine, 12 shots on goal. The oldies, where they had done so well in earlier games to put on pressure and, 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 and build and sustain that pressure could only fire off two shots that entire game. How do they respond? Do they get a taste of their own medicine of a team coming from three behind to almost reverse sweep? 
All right, Ronathan, let's see. Oh, Hank has it. Oh, my goodness. That should have minimally been on target. Echo's going to put it off the back wall. Hank can't get the follow. Early opportunity missed by the oldies. Will they go on to Rue? That missed chance. Oh, Echo with the shot. And Ty came almost seemingly from nowhere to clear it off the goal line. Raz. Ty takes his time, sets himself up, dispossessed by Hank, but picked up by Elniar. Oh. Raz clears it down, doesn't get it past Ty, it remains in the blue half. Hank, the 50, the pinch is going to squeeze out a shot for Elfie! It's wide! And there's going to be a bit of breathing room and space. Hank trying to get past Ty. The 50 squeezes out to the wall. Raz is going to pick it up. Or is he? No, he's not. This is going to be awkward for the oldies. Team Frantic looking for that first blood. They want to put pressure on and keep it on. They want to get their boot onto the throats of the oldies. And that is perhaps the start of it. Elfie secures the lead. The opening goal for Frantic. Oh my word, can Hank get there? He can't. Another opportunity begging for the oldies. Let's team Frantic off the hook and now they're in attack or are they? Ty's got some work to do, which he does well. Well, so far, Andrew, Hank seems to be showing mercy. Echo gets it over one. Elniar's going to get the clear, though, through his corner. Can he get the follow? He does. Tie with a touch. Trying to find a teammate, doesn't do so. But Elfie, looking to go to load, picks up boost, comes down off the wall. Loses momentum along the way. Oh, Echo, looking to dispossess, intercept and have a shot at goal. This is awkward for the oldies. Echo does enough for a reprieve. It is still only a one goal game, Rez! Looks down for a moment. When he looks up, there's a ball barreling down on him. But he looks up just in time to get the clear. The oldies being run a little bit ragged here. They're not their organized self that we saw in the first three games. Raz with the flip reset. Only as far as Ty. Opportunity now. This is awkward for Team Frantic. Cleared by Elnia. Ty looking to push it upfield. Pushes it across to Elfie, but it's cut away now by Echo. Oh, shot now! Yes! Hank finally starts to remove the mercy. Echo into the corner. Hank with the follow. Nice read. Gentle touchdown. We call that the African bouncer. It works superbly. One apiece. Red Flash slinks into the chat. Good to see you. Welcome back. Raz. Looking to take a lead for the oldies. A nervy one minute to go. The oldies would love to wrap this up right here, right now. 
while Team Frantic want the marching comeback to continue. They're going to have to clear it away. Echo, there's been a demo in front. A double demo. Can they do something with it? Oh, ho, ho. two demos in front of that. They couldn't press home the advantage. Scooping the lead with four seconds on the clock. I think we're headed to an overtime and let's tie. Can get there with the double. It was so close. It's not to be. And we are in a game five. Overtime. Golden goal time. This for the win. Oh. <coughs> oh. Sorry, I had to press the cough button there. The goldies, the oldies, but gold so close from sewing it up. Denied by an upright and a crossbar. The action is still frantic out there. Echo with one of his trademark controlled clears, but only gets as far as his corner. Opportunity now. Frantic. Ty looking for the pass in front of the net, but none of his teammates close enough to do anything anyway. And the oldies buy a bit of time. Raz now. Can he get on the end of this? Looking to control it. Ground pinches it only as far as Ty. Ty gets it over. Only Henk in net. It's going to go wide, but for how long? Henk will control it around the corner. The demo by Echo gives them some time. An open net. If someone can get on the end of it. Echo. Raz. Oh, nervy for Team Frantic, but they survive and they go on for another attack. We've had a minute and 20. Echo shoots from distance. The no mercy demo in front of the goal by Hank will ensure that the oldies are going to wrap it up. Four games to one. We will not see the game seven thriller. The oldies, but gold finished third place champions in the IGL Spring Circuit 2v2 Tier 2. Well done. What a great season from both these teams, from everybody involved. What a pleasure it has been to be a part of it, to have played a big part of the season of the oldies but gold. It has been fantastic to see them progress as far as they did. Huge up to BK Team Frantic finishing fourth. What a series. What a season. What a circuit it has been. Alrighty. So that brings us to the end. So now for the next two to three weeks, there's going to be no casting of the IGL. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my time. But I will say, for the start of the summer circuit, I'm, we're going to have, these casts are going to be a lot more epic. We're going to have, firstly, definitely for the best of sevens, we're going to give an hour and a half between games. The one hour is just, it's just too short for a best of seven. We want to make a proper show with a pre-show, with stats, with predictions, with chat getting involved. We're going to have team interviews, player interviews, coach interviews. We're going to do awesome things. I'm really, really excited about it. That kicks off in early July. So about three weeks from now, that will start. And I hope I will continue to be a part of the Oldies But Gold journey and perhaps others, maybe this entire tier. I, I don't know, but I, I, I love getting to know the teams and being part of their journey. Maybe we can get BK. I hope all of the teams like the Oldies But Gold. I hope you will be back next season. I hope Team Frantic are going to be back next season. All these great teams. It's been outstanding. All right. Congrats to the Oldies. Tomas. Only a pleasure. I love casting this league. I love casting this tier. It's been amazing. Oh, yeah. You and me, Hot Zen, we're going we're gonna to change the game, hey? Absolutely.
All right, what else have I missed in chat? Well, good game, well played, blah, 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 blah. excellent stuff. All right, people, well, thank you very much. I am pooped. It has been seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, five solid hours of streaming with one three-minute break to go and pee. It's been long, it's been epic, but oldies but gold, well done, well played. Surprising that you took it in only five games. I was fully expecting the game second, the, the, the game seven, 12 minute overtime epic, but it's not to be so I can actually get some rest and go to bed. I am an old man now. All right, cool. Thank you, Sabina. <clears throat> All right, people. It's been a pleasure. We will be in touch in the next season. Of course, I'll be streaming my regular streams in the three weeks between now and then. So hopefully you'll make time. Come and join us for one or more of those. My next stream will be Tuesday night. And until then, oh, James Silver just subscribed. Peace. Thank you, James Silver. In fact, to everybody that subscribed tonight, A thank you from me to you. And that will be that. So from me, until the next time, peace, I'm out. Shall we play a game? <gasps>